Pray in the spirit, don't be tired. Allah Baka Ibrahim Sanebalagat. into two if you can and for the next few minutes I just want you to hold your hands of that neighbor and begin to pray in the spirit go ahead and pray let your attention be on Jesus and your destiny no distraction Pray house of Let's 
Lekate brande sana malala basi ya bala. Rakata brande kete kele makuru toso dobre gedi ya bala. Ete poroso dobre gese ne kada basi. Sana kato sabras kabara dosi ya la bala. Hallelujah. Father, I insist that I must have an encounter tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I insist. I insist. I must have an encounter tonight. Halabato sabarakato shada. And asana malakato pratekete bahasadadash. Lord, that anointing for my ministry, that unction for my destiny, sana katosha priyatash. Something must fall upon me tonight that will cause my generation to hear your voice through my lips. Brada tosha brene kalebale, shabarosa de kalabo. The sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I'm prophesying to the atmosphere. I release the sound of the heavens. Sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I cry, holy, 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 unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. I sing, holy, 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 unto Yeshua. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh.
The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing a dove and I'm seeing it resting on people. I see the number 34. 34. That dove is a representation of a dimension of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hands right now. 34. That anointing is finding you now. 34 people inside this place and outside. Right now, please help them. I stretch my hands right now. The Spirit of the Living God. You don't have to bring them out. Just, just, even if you have to bring them out, don't bring them out. The minister stand here. You can just keep them somewhere there. I stretch my hands right now. That anointing is coming on someone right now. Coming on someone's life. Coming on someone's life. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. I'm seeing something that I saw yesterday at our miracle service. I'm seeing coals of fire. We're going to sit down shortly. But I'm seeing coals of fire. And I'm seeing it being dropped on the hands of people. And as I'm saying it right now, physically, you are going to feel that fire on your hand. Right now, it's happening to people, not everybody. But I'm stretching my hands. That fire. The spirit of revival is in this place. The Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy. We're going to sit down shortly. Just let me do what I'm doing. The spirit of prophecy. In fact, I'm even seeing people outside, not even those in the auditorium. I'm seeing the spirit of prophecy. And literally, right now, people within here and outside, people are going to begin to laugh in the spirit and they will begin to prophesy. Right now, I release that grace. Please stop. I release that grace. Just a symbol. Let me hear. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Please help them. Just bring them to the front and keep them. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them so they don't destroy anything. Right now, I stretch my hands. The spirit of prophecy. Bring them out somewhere here. In the name of Jesus. You call it a total experience. That grace, that grace, that grace. In the name of Jesus. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. Feel me, Aka. Feel me, Aka. Feel me, Aka. Feel me, Aka. Please give me volume, Mike. Feel me, Aka. Of the living God, we are here for a total experience. You have put it upon the heart of your servant, the angel of this house, to shift your people into seasons in the spirit and to shift this church, to shift this city. Mande Kapasuza Hasia Katabragados Yalakatos Gabriel. 
Chande la tusia habanda subrakatash. Lord, the anointing for this meeting, the grace for this meeting, in the name that is above all names, as I teach your word tonight, let there be a supernatural activity of angels. Call men, O God, into deep dimensions in the spirit. Let there be an initiation into dimensions and levels of spiritual understanding, of power, of grace. In the name of Jesus. Let's just be silent for a minute if you can, except just for those under the anointing. The spirit of the living God is shifting us. Shifting us. Shifting us. I'm seeing a shift in the spirit. It's like a wind that is blowing. A shift. It's an experience you will never forget. Whether you are online, at the Sunday school, outside. Let that shift happen. We are spiritual people. We allow that shift to happen. That shift is happening right now in the spirit. I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons. Thank you, son. Your daughters will prophesy. Just a few minutes and we'll be seated. This is why we're here. The Lord is opening spiritual eyes. Hmm. The Lord is opening spiritual eyes. I'm seeing a notebook and a biro. It's a manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Never will you see things just from a physical standpoint. You will begin to see the spirit behind operations. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is revealing Himself in this place as fire. It's a mystery that we must understand. Fire. While my physical eyes are closed, my eyes are open in the spirit. Fire. Is a mystery that refines. Is a mystery that prunes. Is a mystery that separates. Is a mystery that purifies. Is a mystery that burns. And is a mystery that makes. Like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Please, Lord. Blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory. One more time. Blow, blow, say blow, blow, blow like a mighty spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Sing low, blow, blow like a spirit of victory. 
back to God in the name of Jesus. Let your word prevail. Let there be a breaking tonight. Let there be a pruning tonight. Let there be a refining tonight. Let there be a lifting tonight. Let there be healings tonight. Let there be deliverance tonight. Let there be prophecies tonight. Let there be impartations tonight. Let there be turnarounds tonight. Let there be decisions tonight. Let there be restorations tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated and be sensitive while you do so. Pastor Shola, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. May the Lord bless you, household of David. I love you with all my heart. My spirit is fired up. It's my joy to be here. I appreciate all of us who are here. Um, I want to commend your pastor for the sacrifice of engaging the church to pray and seek the face of God. Um, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see, one of the secrets one of the secrets of impact It doesn't matter if, like Pastor said, um, don't worry. Even if those outside, they just need to hear me and connect. You just tell them they don't necessarily have to come in. If they can, I know they would want to come in, but trust me, trust me. There is the only difference between those inside and outside, spiritually speaking, is convenience. Hallelujah. We get to points in our lives where. We need to take out time with God. Please come, sir. No matter how great you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, for as long as you are walking upon this earth, please listen, let me have your attention. Times come, not once, not twice in your life, where you will need to dedicate moments, not a day, are we together? To seek the face of God. Not just because it's a routine, but because the urgency that surrounds the season of your life. One of the keys to shifting people to the next level is that God begins to put a burden in them for the secret place. He won't tell you yet that this is what is happening to you. All of a sudden you will sense an unusual hunger. When a season has come in your life, Usually, you find out that the urge to stay alone, that calling into the secret place, are we together now, is already a sign, it's an indication by the Spirit that you are wrapping up an old season and you are about to enter a new one. Listen, but this is also the area where Satan has mastery. If you miss that junction, it can cost you sometimes another 10 years to turn around and get back to that level. Satan doesn't just attack people every day. No. He waits for these Kairos seasons. He knows. Remember he was once the light bearer. And he knows that men move in phases and seasons. So if he failed to stop you when you were born, then he will be waiting for you when you need to go to the cross. He, he doesn't just attack every day. He left Jesus and said, I know another moment when I will meet him. That's why God will usually say, fast. It's not just a religious activity. No. It's because you are building capacity for the seasons. There are many things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that demand extended periods. Of waiting upon the Lord. You see, not every decision in your life has equal implication. You don't need to fast to know what clothes to wear. You just need common sense and a sense of convenience. Are we together? But there are major decisions. Lord, who do I settle down for the rest of my life with? 
Lord, do I relocate in Lagos or go abroad? There are many people, the devil destroyed them by giving them visas. Are we together? They found their way out of the will of God. Just because a visa was stamped on their passport, they believed it was the will of God. It takes sensitivity to know what is favor and what is deception because they all look the same. Is God speaking to us tonight? Lord, do I get into ministry? Do I quit that job? Look, there are sensitive decisions in our lives that the, the entire relevance of our lives and destinies are tied to them. You don't make those decisions sleeping. When Jesus needed to select 12 men who would walk with him for three years and later become the apostles of the Lamb, that the foundations of the new heaven would be built after their names. That even the foundations of the new Jerusalem carries the name of the twelve apostles. The Bible says he stayed up night praying. Because with your eyes you will see Eliab and think he's the anointed of God. Do you know that walking in the flesh is the major reason why people never become relevant to a generation? The flesh is deceptive. The flesh will tell you this is God and everything in your life will prove that it is God until you wait. You will see the deception of the flesh. There is something about waiting. Not just praying. Waiting. Many pray, but we don't wait. To wait doesn't just mean to pray. To wait means to wait. Are we together now? Yes. Pastor, it's amazing the destiny decisions that people take laughing. They take it drinking minerals. I, I like this lady. Can I go and see your parents? And this gentleman wants to live for 40 years. It's not a degree that even if you don't like, you just close your eyes and do it and throw away the certificate. When Satan knows that Isaac is coming, he will push Hagar very fast. Because he knows. If God wants to give you 20 million next week, the devil will give you 2 million now. Five, five naira. So that it looks plenty. Too distracting for you to go and say no. Our generation has lost the art of waiting until God. That's why we don't have convictions. Because you see, when you, when you get information from convictions, you will die there. I had God. I know what I saw. But this person you married, how come you don't have a child? I know what I had. I was not taking minerals. It was not in a beauty contest that I found her. I would die here. Marry another wife. For where? The God that showed me that vision. Let that God bring the child. Conviction. Today, you see someone start a ministry. And after two years of five members, he just says, look... Looks like that one. I will just go and add MSc to my degree so that I can just get a job. As though it was lack of a job that took him to the vineyard. No conviction because we hardly respect the secret place. Many things happen here. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. You will never change a generation if you do not understand the power of waiting. There are Kairos seasons in our lives. Times, every time in a student's life, he's required to be serious. But when Wayek is coming close, he's not just serious, it's an opportune time. It's with that result he can go to the university. So it's true that he should read every day. But during Wayek, you see students with all kinds of skills. Coffee, um, cold water. And nobody tells them, ah, it's too much. Mm -mm. They say, you better take that coffee and sit down and study. Because it's an opportune time. Listen, not everything can be recovered at the same time. Listen, listen. Some recoveries, even if they come, the challenges they have created is something you may have to live with forever. Are we together now? And it becomes more dangerous when you are a shepherd. 
Because you see, it's easy to be a follower. You just need to be sure and trust that the leader is hearing God. If he throws you somewhere, you call God and say, Lord, I, I follow this man diligently. Look at where he took me now. But when you are a leader, you have to be sure you are hearing God. Because you see, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but it is the end. So you can be thinking you are right for 10 years. Then the 11th year, you find out you are wrong. But within those 10 years, you have mentored people along your error. And then by the 11th year, you don't know how to turn now and start saying, sorry, yo, hi. So the boastful statement I made in year 8 and 9 was still a lie. Are we together now? The Bible says, even the young men, listen carefully, even the young men will be weary. The youth will utterly fall. Very critical decisions. And we go on the internet. What to do? Ministry or business? Enter. And we smile. And then we sit down and wonder why God cannot trust us with the grace for a generation. Listen, it's one thing to have the anointing upon you as a believer. It's another thing to have the anointing upon you according to the office that God has called you in. But it's another thing to have the anointing for God's emphasis in a generation. Listen, these are three levels of the anointing. You can have the anointing as a believer. You can have the anointing with your office. But for every move of God, God finds men who have aligned enough and there is a grace. That's why I can be anointed, but a season will come. You know I'm not in God's program in that season. I'm anointed, but for whatever reason, you know that in this season, this man did not align himself to be featured in God's program. Is God speaking to us? So when you see God corporately calling a church to pray and fast, my brothers and my sisters, it's not a time to mourn. Forget about what happens to your outward man. You see, we, we are a very carnal generation. And, and it's not an insult, it's a description. It's the reason why inconvenience tortures us too much. Just because you are losing weight, just because of a little inconvenience, just because there is no AC, just because while you are worshipping your trousers tears, you know, all this, we, we are so embarrassed, we carry our entire ego and put it upon it. When a student is going to write exam, if you are rushing to go and write your final paper, and your wig removes, and the door is about to be shut, please talk to me intelligent people. Do you, do you just turn and say, ah, the gentlemen are going to laugh at me? There is a desperation requirement that you must have for the gates of destiny to be open. There is a, a requisite level of desperation over God. Desperation that is greater than the comfort of your body. Desperation that is greater than the comfort of your belly. Desperation that is greater than your reputation. Desperation that is greater than name. Are we together? So when you set yourself to seek his face, the devil will bring all kinds of nuisances around your life. Oh, a new movie just came out. A new this and that. And God says, no. Remember you are in a season. That person is not in their season. So they can afford to be careless and play around. But you are in a season. While we're, you know, in the plane coming, I was so tired, I, I barely slept this morning, and then we had to head for the airport, and then I just laid down, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, son, you are entering your season of glory. It's not for, my word, you can receive it, but I'm telling you what God told me. You see, the moment God said that, what do you think a wise Christian should do? Just jump, hallelujah, no that you wore a good warfare because when that announcement comes the devil hears it too you are not the only one who had it and satan will say all right you are entering your season of glory what can we use to abort the season can be aborted yes sir 
The Lord was in this place and I knew not. That means my time of visitation should have come. But something happened. There was a lot of carelessness in my spirit. That's why you find certain people, they can do well in a particular season, even in ministry. Then they get to a level, they never move again. They miss the season. I tell you, that's what happened. Because you see, sometimes the comfort of success can blind you from knowing when seasons come. You can, I mean, it, it, it's easy to fast when, when you don't have enough to eat. You, you have a justification that is already tilted towards fasting. So you can as well just fast. But what happens when you are comfortable? It's harder to seek God when you have results than when you don't. So I assume that all the people inside here and outside are people who are truly passionately seeking God. There are meetings where you must love God to come. If you really came for that meeting, then you love God. Are we together? It takes hunger. It takes hunger. My brothers and my sisters, this glory, this power, this grace that we see, God is not a magician. It doesn't just fall on people. Don't mind people who just make it look like you just go and fetch it anywhere. No, sir. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. I've told you this. There are things that are rewards. There is no shortcut to it. No matter how healthy a woman is, it's nine months straight. You don't give birth to a child. No matter how healthy the child is, you don't give birth to a child who just jumps down and says, I'm so healthy. No. Whether you give birth to the child in a hospital in Buckingham Palace is going to be from crying to sucking and then grow. Some things in life cannot be hurried. You have to just pass through it. What you don't pray that the season be accelerated. You pray for grace to pass through it. Until you finish that spiritual curriculum, the class you miss will tell in life. You can miss lectures in the physical and read up and write an exam, but not destiny. I can look at you and know that you miss character 101, character 501, this one. You press for the anointing, but you miss this area. Are we together? So we are not here tonight just to celebrate miracles, although that will happen. But I'm telling you, tonight is a night where God wants to give us an encounter with dimensions. You see, when God wants to bless you, He doesn't give you money. Hear me. When God wants to bless you, He doesn't give you a house. No! When God wants to bless you, He doesn't give you a shop. He doesn't give you a job. He gives you what money cannot buy. I always use examples. Look at this. I think I've used that example here. My dear, please come. Come stand here. This is my phone. Hold it, please. This is a product. Is that true? Just lift it up so they see it. Assuming this is 1,000 Naira. If this lady wants to buy this phone, what do I give her? So this is the capital that buys this. Is that true? Now, what if this is what she wants? What is the capital that buys this one? If it's true that this is what buys this, then what is it that buys this? The name of the capital that buys this is called true riches. That's what God this man. doesn't give men money. This, this is man-made. Unfortunately, this is what people labor for. Listen carefully. Is the reason why people are about to die of heart attack now. Is the reason why people need God. God is saying, come let me give you something that will make both the rich and poor need you. And they say, oh God, no, no, just connect me to one uncle somewhere. And God is saying, what are you saying? When you go to your uncle, you have to sit at his terms. But when he calls because something you have... You see, if I told you that as you are sitting down now, you are becoming wealthy, you won't believe it. Because what you are thinking about is, if I say, let's share one, one thousand, you say, ah, 
what kind of a church is this? I'm coming back next week. But you don't know that God blesses men by giving them true riches. Halagbara, you are the mighty God. Eilatobiju, you are the glorious Halagbara. Nigerians who will never pay attention to the word because they think it's a distraction. We have been indoctrinated that church is just an avenue for men of God to raise money. And so every time we come, we just look at it and ah, okay, this one that is coming now, how much am I giving? No, sir. No, sir. God draws people. He calls the assembly to lift your life, to give you something that money cannot buy. If all you have can be bought with money, you don't have much. Let me say it again. If all you have can be bought with money, then you don't have much. But there is something you can put in your destiny. The things that matter are things that money cannot buy. So it will make both the rich and the poor to listen to you. Don't you know that what you are looking for is only poor people that will come to you? Why do people don't need some of these things? But there is something that can come from heaven. It can be bought in any market. You don't see a fake version of it. That God can put something in your life. And you can run back home and say, Mama, I found a key. She said, you mean you got a job? He said, no. If it was a job, I wouldn't dance this much. I found something. What is that something? I found a key. A key that will make a generation hear you. I found a key. A key that will make both the rich and poor to sit and listen. I found a key. A key that vetoes your background. Vetoes whatever territory. What is that key? I found it. That key is a man. It's not a thing. It's not an object you turn left and right. I found the key. Have you found it? There are people who have found this thing. I found your word. I did it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. When I found this thing, I rejoiced. I knew my life, it was over. Some of us who didn't have the privilege of coming from good backgrounds. What is your bailout system in this wicked world? Where someone can look at you and say, I know your father. You are as poor and stupid as your father. But when he puts it upon you, Jesus. Please sit down and listen to what I'm teaching you. Your pastor put this meeting because he loves you. The thing we are chasing for will never give us the result we want. Find out the various reasons why you are distracted from spiritual things. Number one, Naira and Kobo. You don't know that this money itself is a living thing. There is a reason why it runs away from you. Money is not an object. I was teaching yesterday Pastor, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I think I'm seven or so, it says money is a defense. Wisdom too is a defense. That means money is a weapon. Is that true? I'm not talking about money. I'm just using it. And the Bible says our weapons are not carnal. So it is a weapon. God knows you need the money as a weapon. But it says it is not carnal, not man-made. This was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because he says it's man-made. Pastor, the various reasons why people leave God. It's amazing. The average believer has indoctrinated himself into believing that God is an option for losers. When you try useful things in your life and they don't work, just console yourself because you are surely on your way to heaven. Poverty will send you to... You know, they have this idea, so they say, just seek God. Oh. And you see people drag themselves like they are going to a graveyard, all in the name of God. Whoever taught you that men seek God and lose? Whoever taught you that just because you are seeking God and you don't have a rent, and just because you are seeking God and one or two things are not in place, don't let a carnal generation make God look like a cheap commodity. God is priceless. 
Find out those who sought him and how they changed their generation. You are looking for a job. God wants to make you a voice. You are looking for a little opportunity to build a small duplex. Whereas God wants to make your name a key to men's destinies. That someone can come and say, well, I graduated with third class. But um, I, I, I just had to greet my uncle before coming here. Say, who is your uncle? Say, Pastor Shola. Say, Pastor Shola is your uncle. Come, you will be my secretary. Sorry, sir. I said I studied. It's not about what you studied. If Pastor Shola listens to you, then I know that you can come here. A man can become a key. God told me this years ago. Listen. He said, son, if you will make men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I think you've heard my story. I'm sorry I'm starting this way. You can see that. Just let me do what I'm doing here. Eh? I came to bless you. Pastor, years ago, I went to Ibadan. There's a, there's a hotel called, uh, what's the name now? Uphill. Premier Hotel. I remember going there years ago. It was night. And I went there. I knew that, I mean, nobody, I mean, it, 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 how they did even throw me out of that place is, is even a miracle. I went there. There was no place to sleep. There was no money. There was nothing. I saw wealthy people come in. They just parked. They went and I looked. I said, oh dear. I saw small children of rich people just jump around and touch anything. They are not afraid whether it breaks or not. And I was just watching. How unfair life can be. It was night there. I had to come down and look for a church that was having a vigil. Not because I wanted to attend a vigil. Are we together? And I stood in front of that hotel. I said, one day, God will bring me here with honor. I may not have what it takes in terms of business progress or whatever achievement, but I have someone who, a real Godfather. A few years later, I would be ushered to that same place. And at the highest, um, what they call it, the suit there, I went with this, my gentleman. And I mean, they were swimming, they were jumping, playing table tennis, and I was looking at them from my window. I said, God, you told me this. You told me. You told me that if I walk with you, no man will laugh at me for long. You told me. There is something God can give you that money cannot buy. So when he calls you and says, my daughter, seek me, my son, seek me, forget about the hunger that happens for 30 days. Because whether you are fasting or not, many of us, the hunger is still there. So it's better for it to be there for 30 days and then leave for the rest of your life. Are we together? Many of us have come from backgrounds where honestly speaking, except something supernatural happens, there is no possibility of rising to any dimension. And God calls you. He calls you, and men interpret his calling as an inconvenience. Lord, why are you distracting me? Are you not satisfied with the five minutes I gave you? If you want, I can bribe you with another five minutes before I sleep. Mumble some tongues and open my Bible and read one verse. It should be enough for you. And God says, I want to help you. I thought I saw you crying and I came to you now. And he said, Lord, I need money. This is what I need. If it's not money you are knocking my door with, go back. I need raw money straight. And God is saying, if I bless you with money alone, I still cheated you. But someone can kneel down and say, Lord, I may not have much now. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I may not come from a great family like Gideon. But Lord, I heard that when you find men, you make wonders out of them. I'm available. I may not be much. I may not have all the parameters that men use to measure success. And God says, just trust me. Ah! Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. 
And I will ever love you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever trust you I will seek you in the morning And I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days One more time, step by step For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days I'm starting my teaching tonight by reorienting your passion for God. God has monetary value. God has destiny value. God is not just an option that adds to the thing in your life. So I'm a spiritual businessman. So I'm successful. I'm an intelligent graduate who is working in an oil company. But just because I want to go to heaven, I decided to pay attention to God. No. If you place an advert of a business seminar, people rush there. Why? Because you see the value there. Is that true? Yeah. When you place a job advert, people rush. But when you place an advert, come and seek him and know him. People say this distraction called God. God, there is a track record. They will say it directly, but their lives will show. When people are seeking God, they ask them, are you working? They say, no, I'm just managing. I'm waiting for a job. But I see you spending time in His presence. They say, oh, what will I do? There's no job, so let me just be doing this before then. Oh, dear. I have learned that this my God, when God holds your hand, and decides to lift you, Pastor Shola, it will amaze you. You will stand in awe and join those clapping for you to wonder and say, God, who are you? Could it be that I don't know you? Is this how you lift men? Is this how you can turn a man's life around? Do we not know that Saul, when did Saul become a prophet? And God says, when you add me to the equation of a man's life, I've said it, one plus one plus God is equal to any answer he wants. One plus one is two, but one plus one plus God can be one million. Listen to me. Let me challenge you here. If in case you just came for this meeting just because you felt your friend just pressured you to come and you're saying, okay, let's while away time, it's a Saturday. I want you to change your mind. See it as someone calling you to say, I want to change your life. Pastor, you know, we say this all the time. One encounter in God's presence will change people's life. They just say amen, but truly they don't believe. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, Impossible becomes possible say when you hold my hand everything everything becomes possible when you hold my hand everything becomes possible when you You will see those you are looking for come to you. The 
Bible says the Gentiles will come to your life. Forget about those laughing at you. My brother, stay with him with your torn trouser and your 200 naira shoe. There's no need of faking it. Why fake what can be real? Stay with him and watch the wonder he will make out of your life. That a day will come, you will sit down and say, God, what have you turned my life to? What have you turned my life to? I can tell you that this God we serve is not a scam. Don't get used to people cheating and defrauding you and add God to the list. This man standing before you is a testimony that when God holds your hand, a generation must hear you. It has nothing to do with sentiments. Are we together now? Yes. Sacrifice. Let me tell you a, a, a very humorous something that, that happened. Um, I went somewhere to preach, and um, you notice there's a lot of scarring in my face. I went somewhere to preach, and you know, was a big sacrifice there. And um, I mean, after the whole thing, I don't know whether it was the water or something, and I mean, this thing just messed up my face and all of that and I turned I said Lord all this sacrifice I'm doing this is for the gospel my face is paying the price and everything is paying the price and then I was praying just today and the Lord just spoke to me and said do you not know that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. When I came in here, Pastor, I quickly sent, I said they should find me a, maybe a dermatologist or someone to just come and look at my face. And they got a woman somewhere. And when she came, that woman had been praying to God to come to Zaria for Koinonia. So, listen. So, when she heard that they said, we want you to come and look at Apostle. She, she couldn't believe it. When she came, she said, I told her, I said, how much, said, how much what? <laughs> when you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hand, prophesy to yourself one more time. When you hold you hold When your uncle holds your hand, some things are not possible. Many uncles have held their hands even when we're going down. It's not that they wanted to throw you down, it's that they were men too. Are we together now? Your certificate held your hands. In fact, you held it and you were still going down with it. But when he holds your hand and says, seek me, seek me. He said, oh God, I'm, I'm tired. I need to marry. There's a guy I saw, oh God. And he said, look, you are, if, if it's just by browsing Facebook and WhatsApp, you will not, you will marry a foolish man. Stay with me. Let me walk on you and you will see what I can do with Esther when she avails herself. The call to seek God is a call to change your life. The call to seek God is not a favor to honor a man's vision. The call to seek God and wait upon God is not an inconvenience just to come and repent when you have sinned. No! God is saying, I have heard your cry. Prepare a solemn assembly. I want to visit you. I want to change your life. Some of you right now, there are businesses you would have been doing. Maybe you left your shop and left whatever. And you are here. And the devil is telling you, imagine 15,000 now. 30,000. And God is saying, what are you saying? 15,000. 30,000. And the wicked Luciferian spirit that disturbs members when the word of God is coming. They sit down and calculate and somebody just calls and says, are you going to give me or not? 
I mean, I can transfer 100,000 right now. And God says, sit down. And you round up and go back feeling cheated. God, you cheated me. I would have made 100,000 this night. And God says, is this what I'm worth to you? 100,000. Whereas a day will come, somebody will be holding a check of a million naira, And he says, can I have the privilege of giving you? And you say, God is a lie. I'm joking. God says it's not a lie. That's what happens when men seek. When Jesus was born, a star rose. It was so bright, men could not deny it. And the Magi carried their gift and started following the star. It's always a star that leads you to a person. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. I don't know what background spiritually that we've had. But I call you tonight, even as we prepare to pray, return back to seeking God as, as a means of living, as a livelihood. Because it truly is. Don't see God as some part-time distraction. Angry while you are opening your Bible in the morning. Oh, Psalm 60 now. Kai, this Psalm is long. I thought it was 12 verses. Ah, is it that the devotional made a mistake? What is all this one? I need to hurry up. You see, that, that is a very wicked spirit because he wants to destroy you. But you can go and sit down in a man's office. After six hours. He said, you are still here. Be patient. Then he said, ah, you are just happy that he passed and was aware you are there. He said, I hope you are not tired. Say, me, Abba, Uncle, we are tired for where? I'm a young man. Is there a job I'm looking for? While you are laughing, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. I came here sincerely to challenge and shake you up and down. There are many men of God, Pastor, carrying cards all around. I'm a man of God. I promise you, if you invite me, even you, you will know that God is at work in my life. My brother, with all due respect, the fact that you are groaning around, seeking people, seeking opportunities. The Bible says, neither do men light a lamp. That's the secret. It's not the lamp, it's the light on it. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, but it does no good if it's just like that. But there is a fire that must come. When that fire comes, even if you put it under a bushel, it will burn it and make sure everybody knows there's fire there. There are many music artists carrying their albums, running around, begging and saying, Pastor, I hear there's a program. I'm anointed. The other day, I thought you had my song. Didn't you like what you had? See, that, those is a wrong approach. It's an analog and wicked approach that leads to bitterness and envy. The greatest way to publicize yourself is to remain in the secret place. That when you are in the secret place, you are making more noise than you know. You come out of that secret place. And as a man of God, you go for just one meeting. And God will make it such that all your destiny helpers are seated in front of you. And while they are hearing you, this one is saying, we've gotten the last speaker for our conference. This one is saying, we've gotten the next one. And you turn back and say, God, this is how you change people. Whereas there's somebody begging around, they say, okay, 10 minutes, or so you hurry up. And you come up the pressure because you are not anointed. You will talk nonsense and the people will not be blessed. The other pastor said, I told you, let this be the last time this man ever comes to our program. It pays to seek God, not just serve Him. It pays to seek God. We seek His hands, we seek His miracles. We seek anointing, which is not bad. But my brothers and my sisters, none of this is the face of God. You must be passionate. Passionate. Seeking God will cost you a lot. Let me be very honest in the name of honesty. Let me open you up to the truth. Seeking God will cost you a lot. The Christianity of convenience while you are seeking God is a joke. The convenience comes as a reward when you have found that which he gives you in the secret place. And sometimes we have to be honest. You see, as men of God, sometimes we make the mistake of pitying people who are starting out with God. And we make them to compare their lives with our current results. 
and rush them out of their seasons of training. Are we together now? The brother is fasting and trusting God for his finances and studying. And sometimes you just look and say, this guy, this night the jail for 30,000. I'm a mistake. No. Let him encounter Jehovah Jireh. Something is happening. Are we together now? Your pastor today can give out a million naira, and by evening it has returned because there is a track record. Something has been built in the spirit to produce that result. So no matter how they love you, you have to start. You have to create your own track record. Not everything in this kingdom is impartable. There are track records that you must create by yourself. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Seeking God will cost you your time. It will cost you your time. Anything you love, you have time for. Your job, your children, your wife, your husband, your business, you have time for it. Whether rain is falling or not, you know this is Monday, I should be at my shop. You defy that rain. Seek God. He said, I'd rather, I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Passion. Seeking God will cost you your time. Lagos, I know we are busy people. I acknowledge this is a cosmopolitan city. This is a, a very value-driven city. But I call you once again to a place where men give God time. If you give God time, He will give you something that is worth your time. Are we together? God is speaking to someone right now. I need more of your time. That's what God is telling someone. I need more of your time. These five minutes every day, these ten minutes every day, this sitting down praying while you snore, 80% of the prayer time is sleep. God is saying, I need your time, and with that time, I need your seriousness. Seeking God will cost you a lot of things. Sadly, it may cost you a lot of pain. This is why when you talk against someone that God has anointed, even in the secret, you will be punished in the open. Not because God is unfair. The sacrifice that it takes to attain that level in the spirit is a sacrifice God guards with his own jealousy. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not, not a believer, mine anointed, not the anointed, my like my property. Don't touch my wife. Are we together now? Are you ready to go through the pain that it will take to see God? Don't just look at the glory. It takes pain. Because sometimes in seeking God, you will be strange. You will be against status quo. Men will misunderstand you. And say, why is this lady always running around church? So this is how far this husband sin has become. Hapa, take it easy. And you will feel stupid for seeking God. You will feel stupid for coming for prayer in the morning. And you will almost be tempted to say, Pastor, I think God has calmed me. Let me just go back. And God says, just when your miracle is coming. I've made up my mind that if I perish, brothers and sisters, I perish. But me and God, we have, it's a salt covenant. Inseparable. It's not because of what he's doing today. I love him desperately and truly. There's no amount of pain that I will not go. Pain means nothing to me when it comes to the love. My love for God. We're a very pain averse generation. And pain is something that you don't intentionally go and embrace. However, every successful person knows there is a pain factor. I, I wish that I were lying. I would have just apologized to you and said, okay, I'm joking. But I'm very serious. The birth of anything valuable is painful. That includes your destiny. Ask every mother here, they will tell you. No matter what kind of prayer warrior you are, no matter how supernatural the birth is, the memory of some level of travail. So whoever told you, that your destiny will just come as a platter of gold. My brother, my sister, it will take a price. It's costly. The bigger the destiny, the bigger you will need to push. It is as soon as Zion travails, 
that she will put forth. There may be a man or woman of God sitting here and outside hearing me. You have seen visions of the great ministry that God is calling you into. But my brother and my sister, it will not just happen by running around and hoping and buying, finding how much a suit, a suit is and how much um, a good tailor can show you traditionals. That's not how to prepare for ministry. You prepare for ministry that way you won't last one year. I, I guarantee you. Is to stay in the secret place. Are we together now? And it will cost you pain. There are times that others will go ahead and while you want to join them, God says, you wait. And God will say, no, don't rob me. God, I want to enjoy life too. I'm a social person too. And God says, for two weeks, you are not going on Facebook. He said, God, did I do anything wrong? No. He says, it's my training for you. And he says, so God, just me, you now isolated me. God says, I thought you said you want to be Esther. I thought you said you want to be Elijah. For three months, you are not going to watch a single movie. I said, ah, God, just when this film came out, that I, I, I will, allow me to watch it and I can sacrifice any other thing. It's not about the film. He's ascending the throne of your heart to make sure he becomes the epicenter of your all. Are we together now? There are times that you just receive your salary. And God says, carry your salary on your way to household of David. Meet Pastor Sholan. So you say, no, this is a devil. God doesn't work like that. This has to be a spirit that is not of God. And God says, well, I've spoken once. It's your responsibility to hear twice. I've spoken. And you carry it and feel like a dead man while you are coming to church. Even while they are praying, as people are dancing, you are standing. Why am I doing this? Now, listen. You are laughing. But you see, it's because I'm acting it. That's why you are laughing. When it is happening in real life, you will not be laughing. It's a sacrifice. They say, sit down. You don't even know when they said you should sit down. You are standing. Somebody taps you and says, you are aware. They say, oh, I sit down. And then you carry that seat. And you are just angry at pastor while you are standing. God, this is a rich man. God, what are you doing to me like this? And you drop that seat. And don't even have a transport fare to go back. Don't be ashamed of your pain. Many of us think it's unusual. It's because many of us... Now, I'm speaking apostolically. I know that this is a church of great leadership. But many believers are not mentored properly to know that that pathway is normal. There's nothing unusual as fin and in finishing a service and not having transport back. Many people have paid that price. It's not an attack. Trek home. You are creating a track record. Listen, what looks like an injury today, tomorrow will become your symbol of honor. Don't be ashamed of your scars, that pain. Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. So tomorrow when someone sees you and says, this woman, you just got a, a rich man and just married, you see, you are joking. Let me show you the scar. Look at it. The scar of the vigil. The scar of the pain. Don't let the jeep fool you. I died. Do you have a track record in the spirit? Demons see it. Don't just stand up and say in Jesus name go. You think they are fools? There is a scar my brother. You don't just speak to a man and say may your life change. Amen. And then his life changes. No. I'm being open and sincere with you tonight. There is a track record. The situation you are going through now. It looks like God is silent. Whereas heaven is cheering you. Write your story my sister. Write your story, my brother. Let it be that once upon a time I trusted God. I had Gary no sugar. I still called on him. It looked like he didn't answer. And I said, Lord, whether you bless me or not, I love you. And heaven says, you passed the test. You passed the test. It was never about lack of sugar. It was about loving me with Gary or not. That means if I give you a jeep tomorrow, you can look at that jeep and say, Jeep, I loved God before you came. And don't you ever think the sound and the luxury behind you will distract me. 
Now many have big believers that are switched here and there. One million naira comes and they drive God out and say, God, I need space. This one million is too big. Sorry, I have to evacuate you for a while. God says, I'm going. No problem. You must get to a point in your life where pain does not stop you. Please listen. Some of you, as I'm speaking now, only God knows the pain. You are seated here looking at me. But there are things you are going through on account of your faith. And the devil is already lying to you. You would have married since five years if it did not matter to marry a spiritual man. But God already warned you. The first guy that just strolled around, you had a dream. God said, be careful. I've already told you that the child that is coming out of you is not a child, it's a nation. So when you see all your friends getting married, you say, oh God, why are you cheating me like this? I would have had two children now. And you sit down and you cannot seek God. And God says, I will give you one child that is equal to a city. Believers, hear me. The waiting process of building a track record with God, Pastor, is the hardest phase in a believer's life. Because those are times when you will pray and it will look like God will not answer. You can sit down and malaria is killing you. And then while that is happening, sorry to use that term, someone comes and the Lord says, pray for the person. You will lay hands on the person and he falls under the anointing and leaves and says, my God, you are anointed while you are shaking like a leaf there. Say, Lord, where is the balm in Gilead? And while he's talking, you are there. Your ego is on the line and you are saying, God, why won't you answer me? He's teaching you that it's not all about miracles. It's about your trusting him. You have to trust him beyond results. Are we together? While you are serving God, somebody will just send a nonsense text. I'm seeing you backsliding. Something is wrong with your spiritual life. You say, when I'm fasting, who is this? What, what demonic insight is this brother getting from where? And God allows it to see your spiritual stability. If that one text disturbs you, how will you manage the persecution of having a crowd? Don't be fooled to think everybody will love you. It's an exam you are writing. One person just sent a text, I'm disappointed. You didn't come for the meeting. You have not gone anywhere and you're already becoming proud. And you are there waiting on God. Say, God, what did I do wrong now? You that told me to wait, can't you explain to them that I'm waiting? And God keeps quiet. And just that little test, you can't pray again. I'm proud. Am I proud? And God says, Mr. Man, on your list of membership here, you wrote 10,000. And one text has already destabilized you. Yet you want to command 10,000 people. What happens when a whole family stands and says, we hate you, you are a devil. That means you won't preach again. So God is training you. You are looking at anointing, but God is saying no. Don't you know that greatness is a burden? Much more than the crown. It takes stamina to stand on that stage. If you are not strong, it can throw you. Success is like a knife. It depends on how you hold it. You can hold it in a way that it will kill you too. What happens when people look at you and say you are, you are a lousy lady? I thought you were an anointed person. Shame on you. You go back and say, shame on me. What have, I'm sorry, have you observed anything wrong with my life? <laughs> but when you have been trained in the spirit and you know him, anybody can look and say, okay, God bless you, it's your opinion. And thank God it's me and God that are needed for my success. Can you look at the storm and still smile? And they say, why are you smiling? They say, I have wired myself to smile regardless of what my eyes see. And they say, when did that happen? When I was trained. When I was trained. Pastor, have you seen people collapse because they stole their car? They, they wake up in the morning and stand in front of the garage. And said, no, no, it's a joke. Honey, where is this car? I said, I, I thought we were in the same room. I said, no, no, if it is a joke, stop it. My hard-earned money, 15 million has disappeared like that. No, I won't let this happen. And the man is talking, and then you find out he's not coordinated again. The next thing, he has fallen. Let me tell you, 
I don't, I'm, I'm not, I know that we're human beings, we react in different ways. But that thing is a proof that that car is seated in a throne somewhere. I'm not saying to be, to be irresponsible over whatever God gives you. But to fall down because of metals, that's quite a level of degradation there. I will search for you and I will find you and I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart. Seeking his face will cost you a lot. You will be misunderstood. Your siblings, you see, every time you are serious with God, it brings judgment to anybody who is not serious with God because your life is an epistle. So, usually they feel irritated. Let's assume, for instance, that these are brothers from the same family and this gentleman seems to be passionate about God. One day, this guy will talk to him and say, oh, please don't insult us just because you are praying the other day. You see, it's already a reaction. It will pain you, let me tell you. Because people will look at you and say, prayer warrior, you have eaten and left plates here. You didn't even wash it. They will take little things and magnify. It's not about the plate. It's about the annoyance. They just found a plate as the scapegoat for expression. As if you are not human again. You just see a beautiful lady. Ah, this is a beautiful prayer warrior. I can't believe this. You mean it? I said you will never marry again. You, you see that kind of thing? There is a price to pay. But can you pay that price and remain? What of the attacks that come? We have spoken about physical things. Let me tell you. Every time the devil sees unusual passion, he comes to find out what is going on there. Because he knows that men have a level a nominal level he won't attack you because he knows that an attack will force you to be serious with god so he just measures and finds out that you are lower than the threshold level he leaves you there just be dancing around the things of god you are not serious today you pray next tomorrow you are not serious he will leave you so that that complacency will keep you there but the day he sees unusual prayer fasting praying a night vigil you are listening to a message this one happens you send a text to all certain friends and say sorry i need time with god the devil says mark this lady what is going on in her life this is a threat and all of a sudden the principalities and powers hear you while you pray lord take all of me i dedicate my life and they hear it and say make try to make this lady's life as miserable as possible and all of a sudden, a guy you have been with for four years now says, I'm tired of this, your church thing. My dear, I'm going to look for a correct wife, not a stupid girl like you. And you stand there and your humanity eats you up. And you're saying, Lord, but it's not fair. And God says, you just stay and watch what I make out of you. It takes a lot to be mighty and to be used by God to become a voice that a generation will hear it's not all about just mentorship and impartation it's a track record Jesus himself was on that cross not even Jesus escaped this naked 33 year old man and he said Eloi Eloi Labak uh, what, what is it Lama Sabatani why have you forsaken me? God, you forsook me. You turned your face away from me. Tempted like all men yet without sin. What is my crime? No, it's not a crime. I have to turn my face so that man can be able to look at me. It's a lonely path when you are getting to be great. Because there are times that God will isolate any human being that can help you because he wants to be your only help. So in a strange way, those who would have helped you all of a sudden, somebody you know that your tears, you just say, Uncle, help me, and in five minutes an alert comes. You now say, Uncle, help me. Plenty times, and no text returns. It's not always an attack. 
God is saying, you are in a season in your life where I need to teach you that I am supplier. There were times in my life, let me tell you, I did everything I knew to do. You see, this is, this is a revival conference. And so I'm, I'm, I'm opening up to you. You will see what God is doing in my life now and just think, oh, every, I just snap my finger and say, Lord, where are you? He say, I'm here. It's not true. There were times I did everything I knew to do. Lord, where are you? Anytime you hear God silent, it's because he's carrying you. It's not because he has left you. Let me repeat. Anytime you call on him and it looks like he's silent, then you are not the one carrying yourself. He's holding you. Lord, where are you? Help me. Help me. Send bread. Even if I'm not obeying this principle, let me eat today. Then you can continue teaching me tomorrow. And the heavens still remain closed. There is something that that tears must do to you. Because it is in your crying you gain compassion. Tomorrow now when you stand before a lady who says, Pastor, I've not eaten. There is a memory bank in your experience. You know what not eating. There are people who are too innocent to be used. There is no track record that relates to... And let me tell you another thing. The ministry God is sending you to will determine the experiences you must endure. You must take a sample from everything you will be saving men from. It must be captured in your experience. This is a painful revelation. Believe me. Pastor, I don't just work in the healing ministry today just because I'm anointed. I've had fungal infection that ate my head. For, from nowhere it just came. I said, what is all this nonsense? Many years ago. I was a very little boy and that thing happened to me. Pastor, they stopped me from going to the dining hall to eat with other students. So I would stay alone. And sometimes there would not be water in that school. I would have to put my head in the rain outside so that rain would just fall so that I can rub a lotion. If I pay for people or I buy maybe bonds or something, they won't collect. Except I pay and then they will pick. So today, when I see someone somewhere and the Lord opens my eyes to see that someone is in pain, the anointing, you see me point my hand there to that gentleman? You see, it's because of compassion. It's not just anointing. I'm not faking it. Oh, be healed just for the name. Because when God opens your eyes, you remember. When I stand and I see someone crying, there is something in my life to relate with. What do you have in your track record that can create? Compassion is not generic. To be kind-hearted doesn't mean it to be compassionate. There must be a history that can attach you to people's pain. Please, if you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't waste your pain. It's a track record. You will need it for the people God is sending you to. There are many people who want the anointing and don't have the time. Pastor, every time after our meeting, now it's, it's a unique model for us. I counsel people. I went, to, I went to bed yesterday. God is my witness. I think it was 2, 3. I returned home past 1. Because people come from all over. Within and outside this nation. And the only time I have to see them is just that night. I have to see them. You must have compassion. When I go on stage by 6 or 6, that's your 7. And I stand there till 1. It's not enough to say I have anointing. Do you have the heart? Do you have an experience enough to see a woman who stands and she's talking to you and can't speak English well? I say, madam, so you are not even smart. Give me chance. I'm an educated person. It's compassion that will keep you to say, Madam, what can you speak? Yoruba, find somebody, interpret it. Don't try to struggle speaking English. I'm smart, but I'm not a fool. Speak what you can speak. I've been there. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings. It's the reason why many people are not anointed. They can't be touched. Sometimes this, this, our sense of over-civilization sometimes destroys us. It's wonderful, but be fair to people. A track record. 
That's why God called a solemn assembly here. Some of you probably got by direct. Some of you right now, as you are sitting, your wallet is empty. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't mind the people who laugh at you. They are needed in that history. Let them laugh. Mockery is a mystery. So that the day God blesses you, you can stand and look at someone who says, Sir, five naira, this is all I have. And you say, you were richer than me when God was training me. I say, you, this multi-millionaire. So there was a time you didn't have anything. And you say, look, let me lift the cloth I'm wearing. See the scar. There is a scar. Let's not be ashamed of our scars. If we are ashamed of our scars, we are not going to help a generation. Because we will create a portrait that is not accurate. Many of you are surprised now as I tell you some of these things. Because in your mind, you see what God is doing in and through Apostle Joshua Selman. And you just believe this guy was uniquely fortunate. My God. When you look at me in the realm of the spirit, what you will see is blood dripping. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. But hear me. When your heart becomes committed and drawn to God, then my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. The investment of the Spirit that will come upon your life as a reward for that sacrifice, nothing in this life, nothing in time can pay for it. You see, there are things when you have in this life, you are afraid because it doesn't last. But when God gives you His presence, when God opens you up to His glory, when God opens your spirit to the realities of this kingdom, out of your sacrifice, come sir, one day, prayer and fasting like this is a moment where through all of these experiences, you get to a point where your flesh, are we together now? That flesh dies. The object of your fasting is Him. Here he comes before you. And he says, son, this is the final bus stop. All that you went through was to see me. Your mother did not see me. Your father did not see me. Finally, through all the hunger, listen to me, through all the disappointment, through all the delays, you have finally come to that place. This is the place of encounter that's what god is doing household of david hear me i'm activating something this is the place of surrender that's where he's leading you through your 30 days of prayer and fasting this is the place where my flesh gives way like that it is fire first before the glory it is fire first before the glory. Please, Mike, take it higher for me. It is fire first before the glory. The, the, listen, listen, listen. When there is a sacrifice, then there is a fire. Then the glory fills the temple. That's the pattern. The sacrifice first, then the fire. That fire phase of a believer's life, you can't pray it away. You can't fast it away. You, these are the kinds of cups that you can't say, let it go off me. Uh -uh. You only take the grace to take it. Master, can, we, can you grant that in this kingdom we sit at your left and right? He said, can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Lord, I want to have a mighty ministry and see the power of God heal the sick. I want revelation and utterance. He says, can you pay the price? It's not a gift. This is the place of encounter. Not the silver, please. My please come to them, please. I need them to walk. No, 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 not just flashing the silver. Let them understand what to do, please. Listen, brothers and sisters. I'm seeing the power of God touch some people here. Just like you. Please help them. 
I saw the angels of the Lord just moving there. We're going to pray shortly. You see, there is a track record that you must have in the spirit. There are many of us here, proud young men and women. I love you. What you are receiving tonight is discipleship. I love you. That's why you hear me talking. I, I don't resent the body. But there are many proud people who just believe on their own. Oh, I'm ready for ministry. I'm ready. Just because someone fell here and there in your meeting. My brother, there are other parameters that need to be in place. When you feel ready, it doesn't mean you are ready. It's one thing to feel ready, but it's another thing to be approved. 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 Where your flesh gives way. There are many people who need this work. Some of us here are looking at me. That's why we are praying. Lord, this jealousy. And God says, no. There has to be a circumcision. I love you and it's true I will anoint you. But have you noticed every time they clap for anybody who is not you. Something, that something is what must be put on the threshold. So that it be dealt with. This celebrity mentality, as wonderful as it is, you can't be great that way. Let the rest clap. God will allow you. But you who they are clapping for, you must remain on your knees while they clap. It is your most secure position. If you ever allow the clap to lift you up, you are going down. That is something you are trained in the secret place. He shows you. When people say all the things they say about me, I know how much all of you love me with all my heart. I love you too. But you see, every time you clap for me, I turn back and I say, Lord, help me. They are only clapping for me because I represent a face of an encounter to a generation. Keep me that way. Do you know how difficult it is to lie down and roll before God when the nations are clapping for you? When they are insulting you, there is a reason. But when they are clapping, retreats are times when our flesh is caught. There are some of you, when 500,000 entered your hand, you didn't even tithe. And then to your shock, you found out that for two weeks, you didn't even pray. You came late to church and early to leave. You greeted the other usher and said, don't shout at me, please. Everybody knew that 100,000 came. And yet you say, oh God, that 30 million. God said, 30, what? Respect money. No. I gave you 500,000. You misbehave as if you are not a child of God. There needs to be a circumcision. So that you can sit down. And when people know your true word, they say, half of this was not told me. And you are this humble. Tonight, this is what we are going to do. There is a circumcision. Listen, listen, listen. It is always a sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. Say it after me. The sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. One more time. The sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. It has nothing to do with ministry. Even in business, the sacrifice. Then the fire. It is at that point where the refiner's fire is roasting out everything that looks like flesh. It's the hardest part of your life. When you pass through the fire. When you walk through it. God, where are you? He says, remain there. Because that fire is building you. Through that fire, love is planted in you. Through that fire, you find out that hate goes away. And you, who someone will talk and say, I'm an angry person. Ask my mother, we're all like that. Pass through that fire and see what culture you come out of. As soon as you pass through that fire, someone will talk to you and say, stupid lady, you say, God bless you. You say, it's a joke. What happened? Fire. 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 What is the big deal about a man of God? Why should I respect him? I'm a man of God. He's a man of God too. Is it all because he's ahead of me? Please don't harass me to respect Pastor Shola. That statement is, is, a, is a spiritual medical condition. That statement, the ability to speak that arrogant is a sign. Anybody that knows God knows you are in trouble. 
But let the fire pass through. The next time you see, Pastor, good afternoon. Ah, man of God, you just finished your conference. Yes, sir. Still, good afternoon. What happened? Fire did something to you. You can know people's spiritual states by their communication. It's a reflection of their spiritual understanding, which is a reflection of what the secret place has done in their lives or otherwise. Tonight, household of David, we are at the threshing floor of Naboth. And what God is going to do is that he will grant us grace. We are going to cry and say, Lord, I'm not afraid of the fire. Let that sacrifice, whatever it will take. Lord, I listen, listen. Sit down first. I'm establishing a prayer request. Lord, I used to love you. I don't know what happened to me. I'm surprised to see that my Bible is now a nuisance. I'm surprised to see that my prayer life when I was in the university, I was a prayer secretary. Lord, I don't know what is becoming of my life now. You need to help me. You see, let me tell you, when you are broken and contrite, you attract His presence. When you stand here feeling, I am okay. Retreats are not for sinners. They are for men who want more. There are times that you say, Lord, I thank you, but I'm easily discouraged. The spirit of faith is not yet at work in me. Lord, grace. Every time I pray and I ask you to give me something, every time pastor declares over my life, once I wait three, four days, no results, I'm discouraged. It means there is something I need to get. Hallelujah. There are many of you right now, you are about to make very costly decisions because what God told you, it looks like time is going. Please, Saul, we can't wait for Samuel. Why should we wait for what is special about Samuel? Bring me the objects of sacrifice and you are about to lose the throne of your life. And God sent this retreat to say, stop. Before you ruin your destiny, return back to the secret place. Show me a man that has missed it no matter how far and can find his way to the secret place. I'll show you a man who will shoot out like a plant out of the earth again. Retreats are mysteries that create stability and sustainability in our Christian experience. Notice a man that is a man of the secret place. You will not see a challenge for too long in his life. You will see pride. You are noticing it grow. And then later you will see him for one week. He comes out and everything is gone. The refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. Fire is not just for deliverance alone. Fire is for refining. Refining. Lord, help me. I'm a man of God, but in the last one month, my appetite for women, I need help fast. Don't sit down and say, I'm all right until you die and the devil destroys you. Ah, this sister came for prayers and I'm, immediately I'm praying. My mind is going somewhere. Lord, I need help. And God says, you're welcome. Come. There is a place where men find refuge. It's better to be open in the secret place than to be disgraced openly by the devil. Whatever you tolerate for long in your life will be what will destroy you. I'm a man of God, but I slapped my wife. Sorry is not the answer. Go to the secret place. That I could slap her means I can stab her tomorrow if God does not help me. I slapped my husband and I said, I'm human. You see, that means that humanity, can, you can carry a knife and tear your husband into two and say, sorry, I'm human. We live in a world where we celebrate our humanity. People do foolish things and say we are human. It's true we are human. But what then is the advantage of the secret place? What then is the advantage of the presence of God? Please, let's love God, but let's not let westernization fool us. We do every kind of nonsense and say we are humans. I insult you. I say I will, I'm, I'm human. At the time I was insulting you, I was depressed. There are many worries in life. Is the worry unique to you? It is your spirituality that will help you. Otherwise, we'll make a mess of our destinies in the name of humanity. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Yes, sir. There are some of you retreats at times when God tells you you are running too fast. Did you hear what I'm saying? You are running too fast. There can be a man of God. You want this conference today. Tomorrow you want this. You want to build 10 branches. Then at the same time, you want to start TV ministry. Then at the same time, and during the retreat, God will say, out of the 10 points, only two are my will now. And he said, Lord, I thought we just danced that day. We thought we had you. 
So that's why you needed a retreat because that was not me. And you just caught. My people know my, my leader. Sometimes we discuss a lot of things, very ambitious things we want to do. And then when they hear me quiet about it, they don't ask me again, sir, what of that? They already know what happened. Ah, we are going to do this. And then later they see me just come out and say, what were we discussing before? Let's, and I keep that thing quietly. They just know that uh, God has not spoken. I never do anything in my life until God speaks. I've seen the wastage and the vanity of moving when he's not leading you. The pain is that you must come back. God will not go and meet you there. He will wait and say, okay. Lord, where are you? Say, I'm here. Okay, so you come back. Listen, let me prove it to you. The first time God caught the rock for Moses. The second time he said, Moses, cut the rock and come and meet me where you met me there. Cut it by yourself with your hands. That memory will not allow you to crash it out of anger again. I did it free for you and you carried it and smashed it before you and then turned it into powder. But now you use your hand and cut it. I don't know if there's someone here that is tired of your flesh interrupting the grace and the glory of God. You are one leg in today, one leg out. I know you don't like the message, but this is the price for the glory. The same way a doctor gives you a tablet, you say, doctor is bitter. I say, are you ready to be, to be fine? He say, yes, man. He say, swallow it. Swallow it quietly. And you do it religiously for four or five days. And you see that there's improvement. Tomorrow, when you stand in the television and people are watching you and saying, busy, this lady has risen this far. You will turn and say, household of David, thank you. Because it was in that meeting God taught me that pain is not demonic. It was in that meeting I learned you will never rise to a position of greatness with flesh being alive. Listen, you don't have to be a sinner for flesh to be there. You must crush it and trust God. Once you pamper the flesh, it will destroy you. I say it again. Once you pamper the flesh, man of God, once you pamper the flesh, it will tear you into pieces. You need to come before God. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Lord, I come before you. Help me. I'm in household of David. I'm anointed, it's true. But Lord, I need help fast. This is my appetite for money. I'm anointed, but I can still live need be. Once my account is 500,000, I'm already fidgeting. Once my account is 50,000, I can lie. I can change my message to raise money. It's a weakness. It can be nailed tonight so that you will come out refined as gold. Listen. Tonight I want you to open up your tendencies and vulnerabilities before God. And cry and say, Lord, please work on it now. So that it does not destroy me when a nation is looking up to me. It is not when a generation now looks at you. You represent an inspiration. This is my prayer many times when I'm in the secret place. I say, Lord, please, if there is anything in my life, work on it. I represent too much to a generation. There are too many people who are waiting on my work with God to, to, to ginger them. What happens if all of these people just hear something tomorrow and they say, this person that has inspired, yes, they will still love you. But you have corrupted a track record. Someone looks, God uses your face to encourage someone to continue rising spiritually. There is a price. Don't ever pamper the flesh. I'm not condemning you. Kill it right from the inception when that seed is sown. Lust, pride, immorality. Name it. You don't like my, the message I'm preaching this night? Please like it. Please like it. In the name of Jesus, like it. This is the secret to power and influence and grace more than you can imagine. Where your voice becomes like fire. It looks like God owes you his presence. You make one utterance and shift lives. It's not magic. It's not a gift. It's a track record. Hallelujah. We're going to pray tonight. There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to pray. If you don't have a prayer point from everything I've said, you need to be born again. There is a serious... There is a call to a cry. 
when we cry don't just wait for any usher to touch you because the ushers too are going to be crying and praying for their own lives are we together in a few minutes i'm going to be challenging us the instrumentalists to just just soak in the atmosphere just give us whatever it is and everybody here is going to find a place whether you are inside or outside we are going to say lord i come to you i've been waiting for a man to drum this truth I've known in my spirit that there is something wrong, but thank God I've been waiting for a moment where someone will nail it on point. Thank you, Lord, for anointing Pastor Shola to organize this meeting. It's called a total experience. We have other dimensions we are going to talk about, but this is the foundation. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to hear me. I speak to you this way because I love you. There is no other way to be great in the kingdom. There is no shortcut. Are we together? In the next 10 minutes, praise the Lord. I know that those outside, there may not be a point of convenience. Even if you have to stand, you have to find a corner somewhere. Those inside here, you are just going to find a convenient corner while the worship team, I mean the, the instrumentalists, just, just flow, you are going to cry before God. Please, lay your golden crown. I'm a man of God. Congratulations. But we are going to cry. I will join you, all of us together. We are going to cry before God. And say, Lord, I can't lie again. I, you have to win this war tonight. You have to win this war tonight. Go ahead, find somewhere. Pray. Your holy presence. Just pray. Forget about me. Living in me. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I am desperate for you. your refiner's fire prune this habit in my life oh God I've been crying for 30 days I cry I cry I'm a 
man of God, but I cry for help. I know that I'm a woman of God, but I cry for help. I know I'm a businessman. I've placed other things above you. The truth is I love money more than you. The truth is I love power more than you. The truth is I love titles more than you. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have. die tonight. I've been given an excuse that is my background. That's how we are in our family. But tonight, oh God, I release myself. I give up the lust. I give up the anger. I give up the jealousy. Lord, this is for real. I'm not just being emotional. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Lord, what is it in my life that I cannot hand over to you? Tonight I hand over. Is it the car? Is it the house? Is it my reputation? Is it my salary? Lord, what have I exalted above you? Is it ministry? Is it anointing? Is it business? Is it fame? Is it my accomplishment? Oh, 
We are rounding up. Just a few more minutes and we are done. Feel me your Christian testimony I stand for the God of heaven and I pray for you this night I separate you from it forever yeah. pornography masturbation immorality pride jealousy flesh in the name of Jesus, I separate you from it. I separate you from it. I separate you from it. Listen. If there is any appetite that is captured in your experience and is not of the Christ, you may have been tolerating it, you may not like it, but you have found out you are a slave to it. I stand before the God of heaven. And in the name that is above all names, let the fire from heaven that separates, separate you right now.
Hear me. Please just help them. I declare in the name that is above all names, whatever has taken the place of God in your life, it may be a good thing, it may even be something God gave you, but I'm stretching my hands now. That fire, as that fire comes upon you, tomorrow we'll have time to pray for the sick, but as that fire comes on you, it must find someone tonight. I declare that fire reorders everything in your life and keeps God in his rightful position. Hear me. If there is anyone, especially you are part of this spiritual family, there is any association that you are part of that is strangling your Christian life. You love God, but your friends don't love God. And you, you come and receive prophecies here, but you go back and they rubbish your experience in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let there be a separation between you and those associations. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of you, the grace to pray has gone. You are not bad. The grace just dried up. You cannot consciously, you don't love God enough to go for a retreat on your own. Church retreat, yes. Departmental retreat, yes. But, but that on your own, you say, I need God. I pray for you. Whatever must happen to you tonight, in the name of Jesus, the passion and it will infect you is like a cancer. I declare, may that hunger land upon your life now. The Holy Spirit used to wake you 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and you will pray, but something happened. And all of a sudden, his voice is not even clear. I decree and declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, I shift you back to that realm where you hear his voice. Listen, there are many of us I'm praying because your vulnerabilities are too much. We have to pray. Some of you are unusually emotional. It's not just biological, it's demonic. Listen, I want to pray for you. It's demonic. The devil plays it. Anything just goes. The self-restraint, the capacity to say no is not there. Anything can happen. Let me just preach my old school message tonight. That good old message that will pull everything until you carry the glory. That excessive emotional, you just say, oh, I think it's just, it's just me, it's just hormonal. It's just, no, no. If you allow your emotions, they will tear you into pieces and ruin your Christian experience. The world that is looking at you and looking up to you will not hear the fact that you were emotional. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the grace, the stability of mind, of spirit, of emotions that will help you preserve the testimony of God upon your life, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Especially my adorable sisters. Dear sisters, hear me. That you are a woman does not mean that your emotions just go haywire and let the devil destroy you. I declare the stability of Deborah. Let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you a little assignment. We are, we are back tomorrow. I know that many the impartation, and please don't miss tomorrow's meeting. Even if you are not a member of Household of David, um, just make that sacrifice for tomorrow. It's my last session. It will be a waste to do an impartation and to pray and do all of these things. This is what you need. The assignment I'm giving you is please take at least 15 minutes when you go back home. Any 15 minutes before morning, just take some time alone with God. Even if you are married, just pray for some 15 minutes and stay 
and trust God. List out the things that must get out of your life and pray for that 15 minutes. Hold it as a request. Lord, this must leave. Lord, this must leave. Because the fire that is coming upon you is a fire that your generation will celebrate you for. Your wealth is in that fire. Your greatness is in that fire. Your glory is in that fire. God and understand how he operates. If you're with me, say amen. It's not enough to be used by God. You must understand God and understand his system of operation. Yesterday, I had to call um, Binga and to tell him, okay, prepare. He will play this for me. Um, because I was sensing in my spirit that the anointing that will be flowing today would come on the wings of the strings. Now, there's nothing wrong with all of this. You will be surprised that if all God wants is the drums, that is how it is. A man of God can come and claim you know God and find out that you're not connecting and you're struggling. Those of you in ministry, learn this. Don't, don't box God and say the fact that God moved this way yesterday is the way he will always move. You must have the flexibility and the sensitivity. And that only comes when you are a man of his presence. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm teaching on the secret place. Help them please. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will be. Oh, speak from your heavens. And the earth will be my altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let Fire from your altar, touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Hey, let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to be very, sit down, be very sensitive tonight. What I'm teaching tonight is not just a sermon, it's an office. Hallelujah. I understand the mysteries of the secret place and it's by grace. And the Lord has allowed me to share this. And in the name of Jesus, I believe that one of the graces that will come upon us tonight is the grace for the secret place. Hallelujah. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 12 reveals to us that God is everywhere. It was the psalmist that began to help us understand that it is not possible for a man to hide from God. 139, when you read from verse 7 to 12, just write it for the purpose of the reference that God is everywhere is called his only presence the ability to be everywhere are we together he said where can i hide from your presence it's a question if i run there you are here if i go there you are there if i go there even in the midst of darkness you are there so it's an established fact from scripture that god is everywhere it's very comforting to know that that god is everywhere but then he does not meet with people everywhere. Understand this. God is everywhere in his sovereignty and omnipresence. 
But the place of encounter has always been Old Testament, New Testament, and through eternity. God does not meet with people everywhere. In the dealings of God with men, location, atmosphere matters. Everywhere is not conducive for a meeting place with God. Just because this is a New Testament and Christ has died and all of that, the veil has been torn, does not mean everywhere is a conducive meeting place. Are we together? The concept of the secret place is one of the mysteries in scripture that is behind unusual manifestations of the life and the power of God upon a man. When you see any man, any woman, any pastor, any individual commanding unusual dimensions of the effulgence of the life, the power, the presence of God, then that individual is a person of the secret place. God is everywhere, but he doesn't meet with people everywhere. Hallelujah. When you want to have a business meeting with an individual, you don't stand by the roadside to discuss destiny altering businesses. Is that true? You find conducive places scattered across this nation. Probably this time right now are different important meetings happening. Is that true? And for those of you who are familiar with world events, the historic meeting that is going to be happening between the North Korean leader and Donald Trump. Look the time and the extent of the preparation that is going in because two world powers are going to be having a conversation that can decide the destinies of millions of people. And so the atmosphere, the location, the commitment, the hotels, the hospitality, the refreshment, every detail is going in. That's for men. And then we want to meet with God and host His presence. And then we believe that just because God loves us, atmosphere and location does not matter. Are we together? Every house, every home has several compartments that reflect the value of the people you want to meet. Is that true? There are visitors who can come and you just stand by the gate and discuss with them. Not because you devalue them. They, they, you, they have not earned the right to have access to your living room or your bedroom. There are a few people that you can grant access to enter the house. There are others you can grant access to your bedroom dependent on the quality and the level of discussion. God is a God of the secret place. I told you everything that is mighty and noble in the kingdom is hidden. The concept of God hiding himself is a concept that if we do not understand, especially for, um, especially for believers who are not very balanced, this is the, the imbalance that not knowing God properly creates. Because you will want to say, how, how does a God who loves people delight in hiding himself? The Bible says that God hides himself in light. And you will wonder why, I mean, if God wants me to know him, should he not be around chasing after me? Why make the pursuit so difficult? And others even advocate that God is not hiding anywhere. You have God. Once you have your Bible, you have God. You see, when people preach, look at their proofs. Look at their results. Wisdom is justified by her children. Don't be gullible and just swallow everything just because people are well-meaning. It is important that you vet their understanding by the proofs that they are, what they believe they know is producing. God hides himself. It's a system in the kingdom. Everything that is glorious is never revealed. It is hidden. It is your pursuit that makes it revealed. It's a kingdom system. It's not even just for God. When you buy, how many of you have bought an expensive gadget? Do they give you the phone just like that? No. If you buy a phone or a television, sometimes it's amazing how small the gadget is. And then you see how big the, um, what do you call it now? Whatever it is. There's, there's Dunlop there. 
there's another line there's another instruction written in german written in chinese written in english written in another language and all those details just for that little thing i've gotten a few gadgets in my life and i've been surprised at the rigor of opening them opening them alone sometimes you have to rest and wonder what you cut this you make sure you cut this and why because of the value is that true so god who is most valuable cannot just sit down and say just because i love you no when it has to do with redemption god is not hiding himself he reached down to people but when it has to do with intimacy and our work with god god does not expose himself carelessly he hides himself in light it's true are we blessed hence the concept of the secret place I think it was a school of ministry students or so I was I was telling was it yesterday or when was it and, and I was telling them that everything that is glorious hides hides it's called the mystery of the veil many people just believe that just because the veil has been torn the veil has many meanings the veil in the temple torn doesn't mean the concept and the idea of veiling things have disappeared Everything that is glorious is covered. Are we together? Imagine if your heart was on your head. Do you know what your enemies would have done with it? Are we together? Just imagine that your heart was on your head. Where someone can hold it out of anger and squeeze it and kill you. So God decided to hide it and cover it with ribs. Because of the vitality. Someone can slap your face and you feel bad and it doesn't kill you. But someone holds your heart, squeezes it, and does whatever, you will die. And so in his wisdom, because of the excellency of that organ, he hid it. Imagine if women get pregnant on their head. Think what the enemies will do with acid on those babies growing. Are we together now? And so God designed a system to make sure that the baby is hidden and safe while growing. Only revealed when the time is right. So the, the wisdom, the, the ideas about life help us to understand the principles of God. That everything that is glorious is veiled. If someone were to give you something and you check, you don't see the coverings around it, you will return it back. In fact, there are products that they say if you find out at the point of purchase that it is open, return it back. God is a God of the secret place. Psalm 91. That's our text for tonight from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 91 from verse 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The first information that is revealed in this scripture is that it is possible to dwell. Remember, the secret place is not the house of God. Are we together? You can come to the house of God and fellowship. You can be planted in terms of your consistency. But here the Bible is talking about something. Remember, he never said them. Them. It's not a corporate thing at all. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The Bible says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust the secret place is real the secret place is not necessarily a physical location although although a possibility exists that a man can create a location and dedicate it to be a meeting point with him and god but the, the idea of secret place does not necessarily mean a physical location. The secret place is a spiritual state. It's a posture that a man can take that allows him to access where God is. Very powerful. The Bible says whoever is in that secret place of the Most High, it says he shall dwell under the shadow. That means God is there. If it is the secret place, you will find God there. Listen, if it is the secret place, you will find only God there. There may be other beings around, but when it comes to the secret place, 
There are many things that happen upon Mount Zion, the house of God. Innumerable company of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. But in the secret place is an affair between you and God. Not you and a prophet. Not you and an apostle. Not you and members. No. Not you and your wife. Not you and your husband. You and God. This is an art that our generation of people, as serious as we are, we are losing it. We have prayer meetings, a lot of corporate gatherings, and as wonderful as they are, many people don't know God in spite of their prayer and fasting because there are dimensions of God that have to be uniquely revealed to you when you are alone with Him. There are things God will never tell you when you are in a corporate place. It's true. When you are alone, listen, the Bible talks about Jacob being alone. He was about to see his brother Esau. And he was afraid, not knowing what would happen. So he divided his possessions. The Bible says he sent his wives. He sent everybody. He said, when he was alone, then a man came. He created an atmosphere that became a secret place. And a man came and he wrestled with that man. He said, leave me for the day break. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. And he touched his thigh, blessed him. And the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel, meaning the face of God. Because I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. If all of you is seen by everybody, you will not be mighty in these end times. There are dimensions of your life and dealing with God that is not even for public consumption. There are things God tells you that is not for preaching. They are His customized dealings that should serve as the foundations for your spiritual stability. Not everything you receive from the secret place is shareable. There are things you receive from the secret place. If you share it, you will lead people into error. Because it was a unique communication that was peculiar to your level of alignment. It is not healthy to share those things. There are instructions that if God gives you and you obey, if another person obeys that instruction, it becomes the reason why he falls. Are we blessed? The secret place. The place of the dealing of God with men. Men are not made just in church alone. Men are made in the secret. And when I talk of men, I'm not just talking of men in ministry, like pastoral ministry. Men are made in the secret place. So the secret place is real. It is a location spiritually that can also be reflected by a physical location. Remember, I've taught it in this house, the law of consistency. Come, Mike. If the law of consistency is, is the scripture that the Bible says, whosoever you serve, the slave of that person you will become thereof. Just paraphrasing. That means that if um, I go to pray, you will be surprised that I can struggle with prayer because I'm really doing it in the flesh. But it's not to be discouraged. I will go back again and do it. I will go back again the fourth, fifth, sixth time. As I keep repeating that activity, I am whatever spirit on earth is responsible for prayer which of course is the Holy Ghost but the dimension of his operation that supplies grace and the staying power in prayer is being attracted to my consistency you see that a day will come I will go for prayer and live back in the power of that spirit from that day you can't stop praying again are we together it's true even in your sleep you will be praying and wake up because they, you have become a slave to the influence of that spirit. Same thing with giving. Give, you can frown and carry your seed and God gives you an instruction and you are angry. And then because the grace for it has not been given. But you continue in obedience. Your consistency is drawing to your life. 
that grace is called the power to lay it down. The grace that conquers greed. A day will come where that grace overwhelms you. At that point, there is nothing you cannot give God, including your life. And like Jesus, you will say, I have the power to lay it down. There is nothing God can give you. At that point, He can give you everything because He knows you will release it. So you can see two people and one can easily give. He can carry his whole salary. He can carry his life savings. And another person will give 10 naira and come back and say, are you aware that I gave 10 naira today? Say, I used to give 5 naira before. I, even me, I'm impressed with myself. That person is operating just in the flesh. Of course, God is, is a faithful and merciful God. But when people are operating by the Spirit, how you know is that they are under the influence of that Spirit. It's not something mechanical again. When the spirit of revelation comes upon you, whether you are studying the Bible before you preach or not, it's only you that will know. Nobody walking with you will know that this guy has not read the Bible for one month. It's only you and God. You will never use the, the, the limitation of revelation because the spirit of revelation through your consistency of scripture has come upon you and rested upon you. Are we together? And because that dimension of the Spirit has rested upon you, you will find out it is possible to close your Bible for one year and yet you are teaching volumes of series. It is only you and God that will know that you have not been opening your Bible. But you will be surprised that you are quoting scriptures you know nothing about. You can open your Bible on stage like this, like I'm standing to preach. And on stage, when you are about to preach, that's when your sermon comes. In less than one second. Because the spirit of revelation is upon you. You can literally get up to preach not knowing what to say. And people think you have been preparing for ten days. One week for the conference. And you finish. That's why you see all these things are not necessarily measures of spiritual maturity. Because there is a grace. Follow me tonight. Oh. Are we together? The secret place. The tragedy with many believers is that they think they will know God by reading a book. Many believers think they will know God just by listening to a man talk about him. All these things are stimulators, but the Bible says the scriptures testify of me. That means the scriptures should lead you to want to know a man. The scriptures are a testimony. You heard about Koinonia for those of you coming for the first time. You listen to a message and it propels something in you. Let me come to that place. That's how it works. When your experience just stops at reading the Bible, then you did not maximize the purpose. The scripture must lead you to an encounter. When I say things like this, most people think I'm being arrogant, but I have said it for many years that the way our generation is seeking God, we will not find him that way. We pride ourselves in finishing the Bible from cover to cover and we move around saying, I know God, I've read the Bible 30 times, it's valuable. I've done this and that. I'm in every prayer meeting and you see a lot of spiritually ignorant people bragging around. We believe that the knowledge of God is in the volume of spiritual activities. No, sir. No, sir. You know a man by giving that man time. Time is a component in intimacy. There is nobody that knows anything without committing time to it. No, sir. We are used to fast everything. Fast food, fast whatever. You can walk to a restaurant now and while you are talking, they are frying the egg for you. They just turn it, flip the burgers you have. We carry that same attitude. God, you are king. I'm educated. I have an MSc. Reveal yourself just in a nutshell. God, in a nutshell, Lord, in a nutshell, just let me know how the, your principles work. No, sir. That's why we are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Do you know about finances? Yes, I know. Do you know about the anointing? I even know there are seven dimensions of the anointing. Go to Isaiah 11, and we, we do it like we are rapping. And at the end, the gates of hell are saying, I like these people. Continue priding yourself, and then you find out that the emptiness, there is no substance of the knowledge of God. That's why our convictions dwindle. 
You watch people who claim they love God. Let a little challenge test them. And they will, they will, they will curse God to his face. Lord, I thought you would give me the job. I, everything was alright. They even called me to congratulate me. Lord, were you not there when I was quoting the scripture? And all of a sudden, the employment list comes out and it's not there and you are crying for two weeks. God, you must appear and answer me. And God says, that is all you know about me. Sir King Salama, Sir King Al Janna, Yabone Say, Yabone Nakao, Sujada Nakao, Sir King Salama, Sir King Al You must pay the price to know God for yourself. The, listen, this corporate knowledge of God will not stand the test of time. The days that are coming will require, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God, that do know their God, they are the ones who will be strong and will do exploits. There are things I know about God I will die believing. The rate at which believers vacillate convictions is a proof that we have not encountered God. It's amazing how someone can believe something today and walk in that conviction, write books about it, and two weeks later, he's not sure again. You can't mentor a generation like that. Unbendable conviction based on something you have seen. A man of God that is into great deliverance um, was confronted by another man and said, look, you are always doing this thing. He said, stop misleading these people. And he looked at him. He said, why are you talking like this? He said, go and find out about my educational qualification and everything I had. For me to leave all of that and be doing what I'm doing, you should know that it's not just that I read a book. There is an encounter. What I've seen is too real. I'm just pitying you because very soon you will need me. That's what the man told him. He said, you are under attack. That's why you are talking. My knowledge has shown me that whoever talks like you is under attack. Some months ago in this nation, I'm not one who comments on things that happen on social media, but I understand there was a debate that had to do with tithing. Shame on the church. Shame on us times infinity for being so confused because a man who didn't have any right just got up and wrote a proposition. It's proof that we have not been doing it by faith. It's proof that it's not a derivative of a dimension of God we've had. That means someone can get up today and say, hey, Jimmy, loving your wife is sin. And all of a sudden, he looks at this woman and says, I know you gave me two children, walk out of my house. Why? Because a man said, loving your wife is bad. We become slaves to the ideas of people. Just because they are bold in communicating the idea does not mean they are right. Our generation is an arrogant generation. In the height of our failure, we are still bragging. You need to know God to survive the pride of this generation. You will meet somebody who will tell you, I'm in business, I don't tithe, I don't give, I'm a millionaire. Keep watching. When he finishes deceiving you, he will crash and repent and start tithing while you are suffering from his teaching. Many people today who have advocated error have repented quietly and they are doing what they once misled people into. But many other people are there suffering. Are we blessed? 
we need to know God for ourselves. We need to know God for ourselves. This generic knowledge of God. That's why for many of us, every little thing, you are looking for someone. There's nothing wrong with someone agreeing with you. But I mean, something touches your head. Um, please, Ejimi, are you awake? Benga, are you awake? Promise, are you awake? Uh, Pastor Alpha, who can I call? Why, why will you know God for yourself? Then you now text the people back and say, pray. Then they say, okay, and pray. Didn't you know? Is that a news? If you do not know God for yourself, then let me tell you, when God begins to expose some of us, you know, the privilege that God has given me to meet people, sometimes I sit down and I hear them talk. I can't believe a man can be this arrogant in error. Just because there's small money or small results around, you hear people talking, being sarcastic or men of God, and you look at that person and you know, I can look at a man and know what spiritual law you are breaking and know what consequence is waiting for you, even while you are bragging. Ah, I insulted a man of God. I did this and that, and I went in peace. Look at the foolish man that is talking. The Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake. The person is laughing. Ten years later, you will see the man at a railway station just standing with his shoes. Say, sir, what happened? That prophecy kept trailing him like a policeman trailing a thief. And he thought just because he was free for two, three years, the word of God will stay till he judges everything. The secret place. I'm going to share with you six things. Six dimensions that we access through the power of the secret place. And I want you to be very sensitive. This has helped me in my life. Number one, the secret place is the place of brokenness. Brokenness. Write it down. Isaiah 51, 17. Yeah, Sarkin Salama Sarkin Salama Sarkin Al Sarkin Al Hallelujah. Sorry, give us Isaiah fifty five. Fifty five. Six to seven. Isaiah fifty five. It says, Seek ye the Lord. Six to seven. While he may be found. That's a very dangerous scripture. Where will the Bible say while he may be found? This is not talking of salvation. No. This is not born again. There are dimensions in God that require timing. It, it, it will take, let me tell you, a man who begins to seek God at 80 years, you will find God, but there are dimensions. The remaining lifetime you have will not afford you to grow and transit and metamorphose spiritually to access certain dimensions of God. He says, seek him early while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seven. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to God for he will abundantly pardon brokenness let me tell you this brokenness um, is not necessarily for sinners pride has almost killed men of God in our generation this holier than thou mentality whenever i talk about brokenness like this there are people who just say it doesn't let's get to power part listen brokenness is a state of the heart that declares your consistent dependence on god the bible says a broken and a contrite spirit 
God will not despise. Do you know why many of us, although we feel qualified, we never find God? Because we believe that standing in our self-righteousness, based on what we believe we have and know, God should anoint me. Brokenness. Brokenness. Show me a man that can be broken towards God. I show you a man who the devil will never have access to him. Look at David. Moses was a man who walked with God very faithfully. The Bible says he was the meekest man on earth. Yet, Moses could not enter the promised land. Do you know that? Just because God told him to speak to the rock, and out of anger that was justified, he took a staff and hit the rock. God said, that's it, you are not going. He joined all the other people who could not make the promised land. But here is David. Search me, O oh God. Let me tell you the posture of those that God will use in this generation. Search me, O oh God, and try my heart. It says, if there is any wicked way in me, you don't have to manifest it yet. It can be there, waiting until you have an estate. Nobody knows that one day you can insult a woman the age of your mother. You are not yet rich. So you will think that just because I'm an obedient young man, who would have known that David one day will kill Uriah and sleep with Bathsheba? Put a man's death sentence and say, go and die. A nice shepherd boy. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I open my heart. Search it. Brokenness. It's a language that our generation hates. But let me tell you, it is the secret. The number one proof that you are a man of the secret place is that consistently, it is not sin that destroys men. It is the pride of an unbroken heart before God. It is not weakness and limitation that destroys men. It is the pride of an unbroken heart. Nebuchadnezzar was brought to his knees until he was broken. Pharaoh was brought to his knees until he was broken. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm not ashamed of whatever you find in my heart. But I come to you just as I am. Let there be a brokenness. Searching al Janna Ya Bone Natal Sutana Natal Searching Salama Searching al Janna Ya Bone Natal Psalm 139, verse 23. Brokenness. One big key in my life. Show me a man that is broken and contrite before God. I show you a man whose rising cannot be stopped by any cause, any gate, whatever it is. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart like a man knows his wife. Know my heart. He said, try me and know my thoughts. 24. He said, and see if there be any wicked way and lead me to the way everlasting. That's a man before God. That's, that's the posture that can bring the presence of God, attract the presence of God to a man. Every time we stand before God, believe it. Lord, why are you using this man? There are people who see certain of our orthodox pastors and they stand as young people full of themselves and say, this, this reverend, this man, he doesn't even speak English well. Why is God using him? Why is the man rising? Whereas I am here, I'm a fasting giant. I have this knowledge. I have that. I have this. And yet the ministry does not grow. 
Do you know why? Because that man is not sound in the word and he knows it. So he goes to God and says, Lord, if you depend on my teaching, these members will not grow. I come to you with my limited revelation. Can your grace speak for me? And God says, the little prayer you pray for the members, I will amplify it because it's coming from a broken heart. Let me tell you, pride kills. When you see people arrogant for a long time, they have left the secret place. I can know whether you are one who is of the secret place by the consistency of self-glorification and pride. If up to one month in your life passes without you seeing a need to spend time with God alone, it's a sign your life is under attack. Hear me, if you're a man of God here, listen twice. Don't be carried away by some of these little accolades in ministry. Oh, they invited me here. I went to this country. A senator met with me. He said, you are the greatest man of God in the world. While they are saying that, keep your ears to the throne. Lord, what are you saying? In the midst of that club, God can say, finish that meeting and let's meet where we usually meet. You will enter there and God will never talk to you about a senator. God will say, I'm already seeing. There is... I, I want to bless you with 100 million, but there's, there's something I'm seeing. That 100 million would destroy you. And he said, God, me? I just, a senator, I would have prophesied to God, say, keep quiet, dude. I am God. Brokenness. Many of you stopped growing spiritually for a long time. You didn't backslide, but you didn't grow either. Because you are doing a lot of corporate things. Retreat now is, is a language... Many people don't even know what a retreat is. They think retreat is fasting. So they just close their door and fast and answer calls all through from morning till night. Gone are the days when people lock themselves and say, Sorry, you are not going to see me for the next two days. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. If you don't practice retreats, you will not survive the darkness of the day. It's true. No matter who you are, retreat. Retreat is not when you gas out spiritually and you see that Kai, no grace is working in your life. No, you must find time. I'm busy, I'm busy is a trap of the devil. No, if police arrest you now, you are not too busy to attend to the people. If an armed robber detains you somewhere, you will say, I'm robber, I'm busy, come the day I'm free. The power of brokenness. Have you come to a position where the secret place has broken you? Read you off your pride and everything. You know there is no brokenness by how we speak. Uh, the other day, someone just called me and is that I don't want to talk too much, but ah, at my level now, you know, then we now wrap it up with a religious all glory to God. It's a lie. It's a lie. All glory to God first comes from the heart before the mouth. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us now? Some of us need to find time just by this message. God is telling you, I love you, but you have, you have worshipped me corporately. But that fellowship we used to have, something is wrong. Return to it, oh. Return to it. Return to it. That fellowship is not there again. Even when you didn't have money for hotel, you were having time for God. Now that you can pay for any hotel or any place to stay with God, you are no longer spending time. We only run to God when there is trouble. Then we just run and say, God, I've come again. Is it not you? You are God, I'm a man. But let's not know. Lord, I come to you. I stand before you. And I know that it is by your mercy and by your grace. Lord, I thank you. David, a man after, not God's money. You can be after God's money. You can be after God's anointing. You can be after God's fame. But a man after God's heart. Please, I'd like us to write it if you are writing. I return to the place of brokenness. Genuine brokenness. It will show in our conversations when we are broken. You always acknowledge that I am what I am by the grace of God. There are arrogant statements, especially from we men of God, that are testaments of our absenting ourselves from the secret place.
Number two. Please take it down. The secret place is the place where we find the mercy of God. Ah. In recent times, I have caught a revelation of God's mercy in a way and a manner. I wish I knew this 10, 15 years ago. Not that I don't know about the mercy of God, but the idea many people have about the mercy of God is the reason why they never at all access His mercy. Do you know that the mercy of God is one of the major keys that many people are looking for in this life? Not even favor. Mercy first. Our idea about mercy is that mercy is for sinners. So we pride ourselves that I'm not a sinner. I don't need mercy. Lord, what I need is revelation. <clears throat> the place of mercy. Psalm 86 verse 5. We'll read a few scriptures quickly. Psalm 86 verse 5. We find mercy in the secret place. For thou, O Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy. To who? Not to all believers. Please help me. Plenty us in mercy unto them that sin, unto them that fast, unto them that call upon you. If you call upon him, he knows you are calling upon his mercy. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. You call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond your faith level. Call upon the mercy of God and see Him move beyond everything in your life. When you invoke the mercy of God, He moves because of His, His Son, Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you again. It has everything to do with There are people who are prosperous even though there is still a curse in their life. That curse has not been broken, but they are still prosperous because their language all the way is messy. As the arrows that fly by day is coming, they have no knowledge of spiritual intelligence, but mercy. Please help that lady. The mercy of God. Oh, 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 chapter 3 and verse 22 Lamentations 3 and 22 It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? Consumed Consumed Because His compassions fail not That means even when I didn't know the spiritual laws that would have kept me I still saw results that were not accounted to my knowledge spiritually. And later now that I know that this is the law responsible for this result. I'm wondering why I was getting the result anyway. Because by the time I started getting the result, I was not yet obeying that spiritual law. I didn't understand the mystery of exemption. I didn't understand the mystery of praise. Yet the rewards of exemption were following me. And the Bible tells me the secret that it is because in your ignorance, you were able to provoke the mercy of if God were to wait for us to obey every single spiritual law allocated for our victory, some of us would taste victory when we are 97 years because our rate of assimilation compared to our need for the result is very low. So he introduces his mercy. I know you are, you are, you, based on the way I deal with people, if you, if you don't tithe consistently, but something has happened in your life, and I noticed for four months, you have not been tithing. Ordinarily, based on the terms of justice, you should not receive this reward coming. 
but you were wise enough. Immediately you called my mercy. He overrides the four months not tithing. And then he doesn't justify you, but he gives you this to show that I am God. He said, because his compassion fail not. Do you know what his compassion is? The ability to be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He is aware that you are a man. Ah. So, when God gives Sam an instruction and says, Sam, remove your suit and sew it. And then for some reason, Sam is struggling. Maybe because when he grew up, he was taking care of all his family members. And the little time now he's been able to do something for himself. God is now saying to show. God knows it's not easy because he has gone through pains. And so when he disobeys God, God doesn't say you disobey me, I will judge you. Compassion makes him to examine the condition and say, no, if I were Sam, what would I have done? No, I, I shift beyond I, I'm not justifying this, but Sam, I have been touched with the feelings of your limitation. I still qualify you. This is God. Oh, 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 oh. I started experiencing in my life before I ever understood the spiritual principles that control that result. Not many men of God will tell you what I'm telling you. Most people will make it look like all their result is a direct reflection of their total obedience. It's a lie. No. How many of you, men of God, have gone to preach and you were too tired to pray? You just lay down, open your eyes and it was time for the vigil. There are times that I'm so tired, I leave Koinonia here. And before I get home, it's past one. I have to leave five o'clock to catch the flight. I'm there, there is a delay. I'm arriving and all kinds of things. And the meeting is already on. And sometimes all I do is just lie down on my bed. And I say, Lord, I know this part of you. It is your mercy that I need in this meeting. And all of a sudden, that anointing comes again. I know that the angel of his presence is with me within that room. Not because I, I honestly took Took out the time to pray. I will be lying to tell you I prayed eight, nine hours for every sermon for the results you get. It's not true. There are times that all I did, it was in the plane I was sleeping. I didn't even know until we landed and got up, dragged myself like that, went to dress. And there I'm going in the meeting. And everybody has been fasting for two weeks. Apostle is coming. And you who is preaching, you have not fasted. You are tired. It's, you stagger yourself on stage. But suddenly, I know what this thing is, so. <laughs> Psalm 25, verse 6 to 7. While I was studying this, I stumbled across that scripture and it blessed me in no small way. He said, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Next verse. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. He said, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Listen, there are many of us that if you pray this prayer, many parents today are suffering the consequences of the sins of their youth. They did something when they were young and it followed them forever, forever. And their children's children, they are not exactly under a curse. It's just the rod of judgment that is upon them. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. 
there are people here before you knew God before you knew anything about God you even came from an abused family so there was no hope of knowing anything about God you almost shredded your life into pieces it was even when you came to university you got born again but there is a backload of a lot of spiritual laws that have been intertwined together remember not oh God the sins of my youth nor my now listen there is a difference between sin and transgression. Let's assume you live a very nice life. What of transgression? Violations of ordinances. Whether through ignorance or disobedience. Lord, remember not that in 1995 I should be tightened. I was criticizing men of God. In, 20, in 2000, I should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, God forbid, I blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. Remember not my transgression. He said, according to thy mercy, not according to thy wisdom, according to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. These are mysteries in the Bible. That's why some people will keep getting angry with a lot of people. You will see a woman. The woman is not so wise. She's not so intelligent. She's not so learned. She has been a widow since the children were five years. But you see help coming from everywhere. Mama, what is the secret? She'll say, all I know is one song. One song of mercy that I sing all the time. And then another arrogant person, I went to Yale, I went to this, I went to that. In fact, hey, don't worry, I know that they will elect me. It's just that I'm being patient until this guy becomes president. The guy becomes president for eight years and goes, you are nothing for you. If you can learn to provoke God's mercy, when blind Bartimaeus, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time, he didn't say, Jesus, I am obedient to, I've been listening to your message. Jesus would have said, they're not obedient enough. You only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete, not around. He said, thou son of David, have mercy. Hold on. Was Jesus the son of David? No. The son of David was Solomon. So you will say you are calling Solomon. Oh, don't call me. Solomon will come and help you. But he knew something. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And then he turned. He said, what do I do? He said that I will receive my sight. The mercy of God. Many of us come from families whose parents were wicked to others. And if God is to feed, no matter how innocent you are, the wickedness that some of our loved ones, some of our loved ones had jobs, they stop young people from rising. They are carrying on their head the woes and the pain of bleeding people. Forget that they repented later on. It will take the mercy of God to advocate for them. Oh! Hallelujah. When Jesus appeared to me, I would be lying if I was, I, I always seek the Lord. But at that time, I was not on any special fasting program. I was not on any special word program. I, I'm not sure I was even studying my Bible. Just lying down quietly. And then he came. What brought him? Mercy. People ask me today, I want to see Jesus. I tell them, I don't know how, I don't know how to help you see Jesus. I know how to help you love God. But to see Jesus, the equation, even me, I don't understand the food. I just know some variables. Nobody knows all the equation. What do you add plus what equal to seeing Jesus? You add it and see whether he will visit you this night. Because you can sit down here crying for an encounter. And Jesus will leave you and go under the bridge in Kaduna. And wait for someone by 1 a.m. who is busy insulting my stupid men of God. There comes Jesus. He says, I am Jesus. And you are saying, with, oh, I'm, I'm here fasting. Jesus, this is not fair. I thought you said you reward those who diligently seek you. Because in the midst of that, he's ranting. Compassion is interpreting what he's saying. He's not really insulting God. He's saying, I'm a confused young man looking for help. 
God hears the voice of your mouth, but He hears the voice of your heart. That's why you can be saying stupid things and God is answering something else. Because while your mouth is saying something, your heart is saying something. Years ago, I was speaking to one guy who, I don't know, the, the guy smokes all kinds of things. And I sat down. I was, remember him? Remember that gentleman, Jimmy? Very funny guy. He was under, I think he was under the bridge in Kwangila, Kwangila Bridge. This guy came to be part of us and within less than two weeks, he started entering dimensions of encounter with Jesus. There's somebody that was a, I mean, you look at his life as if there is nothing. But in the midst of that, what his heart was saying is, Lord, I need you. Whereas you physically, your mouth is saying, Lord, I need you. But your heart is saying, Lord, I'm fine by myself. God does not just listen to your mouth. Your heart too has a voice. That's why he said, try my heart. Oh. Lord, give me money. And your heart is saying, Lord, I'm on a revenge mission. I need to prove to people I'm not a failure. And God says, your heart and your mouth is conflicting. But someone else can say, I will never tithe. And what the heart is saying is, Lord, I'm frustrated. If this thing is real, reveal to me. Number three. The secret place is the place where we find rest and comfort. Rest and comfort. Oh, how you need this in this troubled world. Let me give you an advance notice. Everyone you know has the potential of disappointing you. Everyone. I think it's a revelation you need to note today. Everyone born by a woman, born again or not, has the potential to disappoint you. Disappoint you in business, disappoint you in ministry, disappoint you in marriage, disappoint you in every regard. When people say, a pastor disappointed me. I thought he would make me a deacon. I've been there for him. He didn't make me a deacon. I, I, thought, I thought I'm not the last one. What are you saying? That's a man for you. But there is a place that God provided where the weary can find rest and comfort. You are a man of God. Listen to this. I was sharing with a dear friend today on phone in the afternoon and he was so weary and tired spiritually and I was a distant friend somewhere and I was just advising him. I said, you see this work that we do, ba? we look busy but our lives are very lonely. You need to know how to find comfort in God. Otherwise, if you can't find comfort in God, you will start finding comfort in movies. You will start finding comfort somewhere. You will now, I'm not saying it's wrong. One day you go to football viewing center where someone that's behind you will go and kill you there. Have you learned to find rest and comfort in God? That's why some of us get into the mistake because of the obsession to share your problem with someone. The pain overwhelms you. You don't choose who. Whoever is there for you emotionally at that time, you run your mouth and tell people intricate details about your life, about your family. When you are done with the gist, you don't know what to do with yourself again because you have messed up your entire life. They used to respect your father and your mother until one day you open your mouth and told the people wrongly. Do you know that I'm not the first child of my father. I, I, it's a long story. Uh, my, my father pregnanted one Zimbabwean woman 10 years before I came. And the person you are telling is not even mature spiritually. It's just that your heart was looking for the secret place. And because you didn't have it, you had to search for someone. Be careful. This is particularly for ladies. Because ladies, you are designed to be expressive. You always want to be heard. Be careful. You would destroy a lot of good things in your life. There are people who sat down in restaurants talking about the contract that their husbands got and the person sitting at the other side of the table was an arm robber the guy had finished eating but he refused to stand up and go because he was sharing him this faithful oh sorry i'm meeting you for the first time am i talking too much and then instead of the friend to say yes they say no 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 i'm okay then you continue talking 
the God is faithful, Lord, as we, as we are. He even said he's buying a jeep for me. As I'm talking to you now, there's twenty thousand dollars on our bed. Eh? The way the bed is, it's a six by eight, seven, and under. You know that kind of bed. While you are talking, the arm robber is nodding. I say, in fact, I didn't tell you where we live. Do you know that we moved recently? You know that that one white house, and in the night, that man is just there and comes with accuracy and looks for you and says, remember you were describing your house for me. Lie down! And he shoots and kills everybody. Don't allow your mouth destroy your destiny. Are we together? There are men of God who carried their church problems out of pressure and took it to politicians instead of taking it to God. Sir, just to let you know, forget all this one that we laugh on TV. Oh. The truth is that the bills that are on our head, we need 200 million by Friday. And the senator said, oh really? Ah. Um, and you always look sharp like this. <laughs> That's how we do it. It's your industry. And all of a sudden, one day you go somewhere and say, all of you lift up your hands. And the senator is in a dear parlor watching you and say, look at these idiots. The other day I was with this man and he was begging me for 200 million because only God should have heard that. You left him in search for what only his secret place can give you. Are we learning something tonight? Hmm. The secret place is a place of rest and comfort. Psalm 27. Please media help us first. Psalm 27 from verse 13 to 14. We will read four serious scriptures. Psalm 27 verse 13 to 14. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. No matter who you are in life, because of disappointed expectations, because of our goals and our dreams not happening when and how we want it to be, there are times that you can be weary. As a man of God, you trust God for increase in membership. You are pouring your heart. Do you know one of the most heartbreaking things for any man of God is to truly pour your heart to members and people and not see them growing at the rate that matches your sacrifice. Except you are not an honest man of God, it will pain you. Sometimes when I get text messages from people, I truly, tears fill my eyes. I just can't, because it's painful. The time it takes to prepare just one sermon. You see that? And then all of a sudden, very unwise decisions that come from those things. And your heart just bleeds. Are we together? At that time, you will be tempted to call a friend, call somebody or whatever confidence. Now, you must learn to wait on the Lord. Lord, I bring before you these church bills. Lord, I love you, but the bills in my family are almost killing me. The bills in my church are almost killing me. Lord, I come to you because nobody can understand me. Nobody understands me. They all think I'm a wicked woman. But Lord, you know my heart. I come to you. And the Lord says, find rest. This is where you can be understood. It is powerful to be understood. Unfortunately, life does not give you that kind of opportunity with men. It is difficult for men to understand you. But there is one, there is a place, brothers and sisters, that you can go where you know God understands you. Hallelujah. Wait thou upon the Lord. Psalms 91 and verse 4 to 5. Then we look at 62 and verse 1 to 5. If God, is God speaking to you tonight? Psalm 91 and verse 4. He says, He shall cover thee. Look at this. Come. He gives you a picture of a hen or an eagle. Is that true? You know how eagles protect their young ones. They spread their feather and cover them while they are under. They just cover them. In other words, let, let me see, let me see the, the animal, let me see the, 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 the predator in the wilderness that will come near you. I know you are fragile in yourself, but I cover you. He said he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Then his truth shall be your shield and buckler. 
have you experienced that dimension of God? That people can be insulting you. Many of us have not risen to places. You know, for some of us who God has granted grace in ministry small, it's painful to pour your heart. There are times that you can do everything you are doing. And all of a sudden, someone may be listening to a colonial message and say, all these pastors, all they are looking for is your money. I don't trust any pastor in Nigeria. They are all stupid people. They all use your money. It's all church money. You see all of them dressing. It's all your money they are using. When you hear that kind of thing no matter how you are sometimes as a human being it can touch your heart because you know you are sincere but there's no one to explain to and god doesn't even allow you to explain anything to anybody at such times his presence and he says my son i'm the only person on earth you owe explanation and if i've credited you it doesn't matter who and what they think comfort and rest someone looked at me and said apostle how do you get motivated? You are always happy. I say, you think so? If, I, if what is on my head comes upon you, you will collapse physically immediately, not after a few weeks. Immediately. 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 Success is a burden. It's a burden you should pray to be prepared before you pray it comes to you. Are we together? Yes. Success. I think it was last year. I went to buy suya in the night. I was just playing a song. And someone just knocked the door of my vehicle. I just went down and then I, I looked at the lady and she was jumping. She said, ah, Apostle, you buy suya. I mean, that's my life. What, 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 what sort of embarrassment is that? that? That's the burden of being successful. What, what, is, what is wrong with suya? Is suya tobacco? Just that I stroll in the night... To just make myself happy. You see, when you become great, everything about your life is everybody's business. And it can be a burden. It can be a burden. Sometimes people will call you in the night and you say you are sleeping. You say, I'm surprised you are sleeping. Look at that kind of stupid text. You see that? And it can make you feel guilty sometimes. You will think it will enter you. But sometimes you feel guilty. Because truly that time you may have planned to pray. It's all that sleep took over you. The people make you feel bad. And you stand up saying, because of this, I must go for three days dry. To prove, there's, there's nothing to prove, my brother. Go to the secret place and find rest. And find comfort. Many of us don't know how to find rest in God. We don't know how to find comfort in God. That's why we find comfort in things. That's why we find comfort in people. You find comfort in a friend that disappoints you. You move to another one that disappoints you. Then you go to a pastor that disappoints you. Then you go to a film that disappoints you. Then you go to a drink that disappoints you. Then you go to a club that disappoints you. Then you say, I hate life. Like Solomon, you now say, vanity upon vanity. All is. I have learned to find comfort in his presence. I remember one time when the crowds were increasing here, I was concerned about the rain and I said, Lord, what do we do? What do we do? There are several people coming, you know, several people and they will keep coming. What do we do? That time, sometimes, because the venue may not be available, um, the alternatives we used to use then were very inconvenient. I had to go to God. Look at Moses. Do you know what happens when you are a leader? People expect you to have answer to everything, even what they don't have answer for. They are very okay with themselves. They pity and excuse themselves. But they look at you and say, you should have an answer for this. They looked at Moses and said, Moses, you don't know us. If you don't find a way of parting this Red Sea, we are taking it gently now. We will butcher you here. Make swords from the gold we took from Egypt and kill you here. And, and put your monument. And Moses said, just take it easy wise man he ran to the presence of god lord what do i do i need i need comfort these people are wearing me and he says stand still he said take your rod go and tell the people to move forward learn to draw strength in his presence learn to retreat when people look at you and do all kinds of things you have neighbors that are nagging and troublesome 
You have people in your office who are always misunderstanding what you are doing. You have people who will bribe and cheat and live their lives anyhow. And you have made up your mind that there's no bribing, there's no cheating. If it's 10 naira for the organization, I'm returning it. And they look at you and say, holy, holy, stupid person. Are we all not chopping somehow in Nigeria? Even that company said, is it not with bribe? They started this company. And they tried to make you feel guilty. At that point, my soul went down upon the Lord. Wait thou upon the Lord. Psalm 62, verse 1 to 5. Quickly. If we're unable to finish, we'll continue next week. Psalm. Some of you, this message, you don't need it now. Just keep rising. The time will come, you will need this message daily. You will search for this message and sit down and weep while you hear. Right now, you are not sowing any seed, but people are giving you their harvest. So you think it's your faith that is working. A time will come you will be exposed to the harsh sun. The reality of working these kingdom principles. Then it will down on you. You know, sometimes you go for meetings and when a man of God is preaching, you see pastors crying, standing up. And you'll be wondering, why are they like this? Because they, they are closest to that reality. When they say bills, that is not captured in your mind. Because someone else is awake while you are sleeping. The time will come when you will be awake when you should be awake. That's when you will find out that someone can have a bed but not have sleep. The situations in your life will wake you up. Say, are you joking? You want to sleep when we are here? Verse 1 to 5. Truly, my soul waited upon God. He said, from him cometh my salvation. Next verse to 5. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Ah, I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 3. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Talking to enemies now. Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence. For they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. It says they delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. This is a picture of the tragedy of greatness. That when people become great, this is what happens to them. Men can say, well done, you are a man of God. But in their heart, they say, we pray that one day you will have an accident to prove that this faith is nothing. The Bible says to bring him down from his excellency. Then he says, my soul, wait thou only upon God. He said, for my expectation is from him. Are you blessed tonight? You must learn to wait on him for comfort. Instead of running around and harassing people. Listen. Every time situations overwhelm you. Keep quiet. Go to the secret place. Play a song like this or play worship. I think media, worship, worship team. You people should do these kinds of things. You just have 30 minutes of strong instrumentation like this. For people to soak in. Because there are times you can't sing. I wish I can tell you it's every time you can dance. Dance? Where is the energy from? I, there's a lady, she may be in Koinonia here. They are burying her mother on um, today's Sunday. I think on Tuesday or Wednesday. This lady's mother died like 10 days ago. She calls me almost 10 times every day. Crying and saying, Apostle, I believe my mother can come back to life. That my mother said she will live long. My mother was a God-fearing woman. You know how difficult it is for a man of God, especially when you walk in the anointing, to respond to people like that. And after praying and fasting, when they came to carry the mother's body, I think from Shika or so, to travel with her, she kept crying and telling them that they, they should leave her. Her mother will come, no, I say, small girl, we know you are this. That lady can get into prostitution immediately because of anger and say, God failed me. And then someone will run his big mouth and say something. At that point, what that lady needs is the secret place. There is no amount of counseling you bring that will touch that lady. Are we together? It's true. What happens when a man of God and his wife is unable to have a child? What happens when a man of God who is anointed gets married and then they find out he's impotent? What happens when a man of God's family is in shambles? 
He labors and gives birth to children. He's pouring his heart to bless the world. And all the children, daughters getting pregnant, sons are into drugs. It's difficult for that man to stand and preach because he has to continue to be a preacher of righteousness. But someone says, don't bless us with this, your faith thing. If you know God, why is it that your daughter, why is it that your son has not been able to do anything? Brothers and sisters, there are times that life can push you, that even the strongest of us will need to lean to something other than you. At that point, find rest. Oh, my soul, find rest. Find rest in his presence. It's true. There are times that the leader send me text messages, sir. We need to make a decision now. This is what we need to do. This is what we have to do. This is what we have to do. Sometimes, uh, I think it was in the school of ministry or so, um, a few days, or last week I was told that while lectures was going on, someone's bike was stolen. Also, very funny incidents. Now, when you hear such kinds of things as a man of God, it can touch you. Have you learned to rest in God? I have learned to draw strength in His presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. Number four, the secret place is a place of revival and restoration. Write it down. The secret place is a place of revival and restoration. Psalm 23 from verse 2 and 3, please. Restoration of fire, restoration of hunger, restoration of love for God restoration of values restoration of your physical energy psalm 23 from verse 2 he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 he restores my soul he restores my soul he restores my soul there are times you need restoration. You need restoration of fire. You need restoration of grace. Psalm 143 verse 11. Psalm 143 verse 11. A place of revival. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. Hmm. The prayers that great men pray. Quicken my soul. Lord, revive me. Revive me. My, the situations in my life, I can feel life going out of me physically. Revive me. Revive me, oh God. Revive me. I need a reviver. Lord, the ministry burden is overwhelming me. I can't pray again. I can't fast again. There is a conference coming. And Lord, the finances is not there. The energy is not there. Just when I want to prepare, my son is causing trouble. Just when I want to love God, one of the sons that I've so labored and raised is now disappointed. Revive me. Lord, I feel life going out of me. You need revival. Revive my fire. Lord, I used to be a prayer warrior. I used to pray for two hours, three hours. All of a sudden, as soon as I graduated, now it's three years after graduation. Lord, I'm surprised. No visions again. No fire. No nothing. I'm surprised. I misquote scriptures. I cannot even... Appa, no! I used to wake up 2 a.m. every day. 12 o'clock every day. Now in two weeks, I've not even called on your name. Revive me. A secret place. It's a place where men cry. They come to him and say, Lord, revive me. Revive me. Revelation chapter 2, 4 to 5. Revelation chapter 2. This was the Lord speaking to the seven churches. He said, Nevertheless, 
I have somewhat against you. What do I have against you? He said, because thou hast left thy first love. This is a word from the Lord to many of us here. Not thou hast stopped loving me. Thou hast left your first love. I like many of us to just be sensitive to what the Spirit is doing. I already sense the anointing. But there are many of us, the way you started with God is not the way you are going now. It's impossible for a whole day that you will not open your Bible, you will not read, but right now you don't even know where the Bible is. That's the truth. You love God, you are born again, but the fire has gone. You may even be a preacher. There's no week that you will not fast at least one day. But right now, six months, gluttony has eaten up your fire, quenched the fire on the coals. That the Lord would need to pick those tongues of fire again from the throne and touch your heart and touch your hand and touch your lips. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. God is speaking to us. Return to your first fire. Return to your first appetite for spiritual things. You used to buy at least a book every month. Right now, it's more than two years. The only books you have are the ones that are left there. You are not interested again. You have all kinds of devotionals. You have all kinds of things. There are many believers that need to return to their first love. Is God speaking to us tonight? Return to your first love. And you return by going back to the secret place. Do you know sometimes what God does for me is that I can sit down like this quietly and He begins to play before me the visions of my yesterday, yesteryears. All of a sudden I see myself in the night when I used to pray. I see myself studying. I see those things and they bring a fresh energy fresh energy to me. Many of us have lost visions. No vision. You dream, you sleep for eight hours, you don't see anything tied to your destiny. Something is wrong. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. help me sing. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Number five, the secret place is a place of illumination. It's where the secrets of destiny is revealed to men. The secret place is where you find the secret of your destiny. You will never find it in a book. You may read it in a book, but the secret place is where the blueprints, the mysteries of your destiny are unveiled to you. It was in the secret place God gave me this formula that the string must always be played while I teach. He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. I didn't get it from a book. It was in the secret place many years ago. He said, your anointing is tied to the atmosphere of worship. That every time the mystery is prayed, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you. The secret place. Many of you are in one position in destiny. There is no, you don't know what else to do. Because the secret place is where the blueprint, the strategy for your destiny is revealed. Listen. 
that it worked for brother A does not mean it will work for you. You must go to the secret place. Lord, what is my destiny about? Open this thing. What is the key to my anointing? I know I'm anointed, but how do I open it? Why do I stand in a meeting and not see your power flow? Sometimes it happens. I'm not sure. I try to copy this man of God. I try to do this. What is the key? What is the key? What is the key? How do I know this anointing is in a place? How do I know what you want? Daniel chapter 2. We are reading from verse 14 to 22. Then we'll jump to verse 28. A king sleeps in the night and has a strange dream. And the king is angry. If no one can tell me the dream and the interpretation, I will kill everybody. And here comes Daniel. Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. People were about to die because there was no strategy. Next verse. 16, we are reading to 22. Then Daniel went in, listen, and desired of the king that he would give him what? Time. It's not that it cannot be found. Give me time. It looks like my life is not making progress. It's like there is no way out. I don't conclude on me yet. Give me. Somebody prophesy to someone say, give me time. It looks like I'm confused. I've been going around in circles and nothing is happening. Give me. It looks like God called me, but the anointing is not yet speaking. He said, give me time. Something is about to be revealed in the altar of fellowship that will bring fire on my life. I see it in dreams, but it doesn't happen in my meeting. I've seen prosperity. But what is the secret? He says that he would give him time and that he would show Guarantee, if you give me time, I will prove you wrong. You call me a failure, give me time, I will prove you wrong. You call me barren, give me time, I will prove you wrong. You call me a failure, my father called me a failure, give me time, I will prove you wrong. Listen, don't let no arrogant person look at your life today and conclude on you. Anytime anybody talks nonsense, don't argue. Give me time. I said I was called into the ministry of wealth and abundance. And he said, with this 200 naira shoe, he said, don't worry. Just give me time. Something will be shown me in the secret place. I will do business with God in the secret place that will shut people down. Let me tell you this. For those who have been here in this ministry for a long time, I said this thing many years ago. You see that? I said this thing many years ago. That's why the name started Eternity Network International. Right from when, from a, a cave somewhere with a bag. Because I saw it. I knew that a time will come. It will be a privilege for kings and presidents to hold your hand. Give me time. It doesn't look like it. Give me time. Between now and then, a mystery will be revealed. Brothers and sisters, when you see a man rising by a technology you don't understand, he used time to buy mysteries in the spirit. Time is currency. We can use it and do business with God and receive the mysteries of our destiny in exchange. 17. Then Daniel went to where? He went to his house. Just like everyone went to their own house and made the king the thing known to Ananiah and so on and so forth, 18 that they would desire what? mercies of the God of heaven you now see our mystery again concerning what? it's a secret wealth is a secret Lord, why is this thing not working in our family? it's a secret this anointing, as open as you see, there is more to it than what your eyes see. There are secrets. There are secrets to life. It's the one you carry that will help you command life. There are secrets to favor. It says, and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. 19. Hallelujah. 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 Then, the secret was revealed to Joshua Selman in a night vision. He says, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. 
Listen, there are people here. What you are doing is true, you are called. But you will not get there the way you are approaching it. Your call is genuine, but there is no secret. Nothing has been given to you. God gave you the secret of not the general church growth, the church growth for koinonia. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's not charms that is bringing people. It's a secret. It's a mystery. We trade mysteries in the kingdom. You will look at it like this and not see where the equation adds up. But you ask the devil. Find out the devil that will stop people from coming. It's a mystery. Whatever mystery brings you somewhere, keeps you there. It's a mystery. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Daniel blessed the God of heaven. We are reading to 22. Then Daniel answered and said, Listen, blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them who know understanding. 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what it is in darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. 28. Verse 28. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known to me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made unto us the king's matter. A matter that does not concern you. But by the mystery of the secret place, God gives you something. Great men are fathers of faith in this nation. They will tell you they found secrets. When they started, people said, don't mind them, it's five years. Now they are going as if the devil doesn't exist. I've passed redemption camp a number of times. And I am amazed at how people leave Lagos around and come to this forest. I've been to Canaan land altar. I've been to almost, almost all the prayer grounds from MFM to, to Living Faith to, to Redeemed to Foursquare. It's amazing. Almost all of them can be holding programs concurrently, simultaneously, and it's all packed full to the outside. Same mysteries. Listen, when you hold the mysteries of the kingdom, I pity whoever just thinks you are joking. It's not pride. You will play life like a chess. But there is a God in heaven that revealed what? Please, I want to comfort you. Concerning your business, concerning your career, there is a God oh, in heaven. And the Bible says he has the ability to reveal secrets. My life is full of these kind of experiences where God comes to me and says, this is it. I give you a blueprint. I give you a secret. And make known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head are these. And he began to tell him. Revelation. Let's take one last verse and we're done for today. Jesus. Psalm 25, verse 4 to 5. Psalm 25, verse 4 to 5. And then we'll pray very touching scripture. Let's read it. One, two, read. Four to five. It says, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Next verse. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. Because I'm aware you can do this. What do I do? On thee do I wait. How long? Say retreat. All day. Not part of the day. All day. Because I want you to teach me something. I want you to guide me. So I wait all day, not half day. There are retreats that are half day, two hours. A proper full retreat is a complete day. From the rising of the sun to the going down, you are in his presence. Lord, I stay. I know you will come. Six hours he has not come. You are still worshipping. Sitting like a madman. Eight hours you've not had anything. It's just general scriptures of comfort. I will lead you where you will go. You just be patient. Nine hours he's still there. 
and all of a sudden late into the night you are sitting like a madman and say what am i doing here then he comes in his majesty when he comes you know he's there all of a sudden the climate changes his majesty is coming to your room he says what have you been asking me about this is for your destiny come let me show you and he takes you in the spirit of the lord opens a bible you have been reading every day but this time he's the one who opens it this is your destiny this is it this is what to do about your finances when you do this they will attack you here do this one do this these are the keys go and he leaves. You get up from that vision and say, where are the devils? They come like before, but you rise by a mystery. And they say, what lifted you? The secrets of the Lord. We don't do business in this kingdom by bold face. You will die like a chicken. The mysteries of the kingdom. Wow. Listen, there's, there's a woman now. Is I'm just waiting. I, I trust that they will finish. I think I sent you the text. A miracle happened just between yesterday and today. A doctor, I, I don't know if he's sicker here, he was trained in ABU. Someone died this morning. Um, now, we don't talk a lot about all these kinds of things. They were in the surgical room with the lady, operating for what I don't know. And then, I don't know what happened, and the person just died like that. He was trained in ABU here, but I think it's another hospital. And they were all confused because the lady said, according to the doctor, he said they beg, I sent you the text and a number of people here, that they begged, the lady said, please make sure I come alive. And the lady just died, like that, just died. And the doctor sent me a text, I think it was around maybe afternoon, and said this is the situation. And the family members are sitting somewhere, just waiting for the report. And he said, honestly, apostle, you have to help us. This is a difficult situation. This girl has died. They check after a long time i said are you a doctor i replied him back are you a doctor he said yes i'm certified i'm not he said he was doing the surgery with um, some other senior colleagues i said talk what do you want now he said apostle we can't tell this family this lady has died and i said okay the anointing of the spirit just came upon me in a very strange way and then i sent a text it's still in my phone i sent a text i said in the name of jesus I called back your life. I said they should take the phone and place it on the person. And then the doctor foolishly just did it like that. Help her please. Immediately he placed that phone. After a few minutes, all of a sudden, from the gates of death, this girl just jumped back. The text is still in my phone. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. Hey, Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, 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 Yahweh, 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 hey, 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 Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Stop here for tonight. Listen. What you call greatness in life is a function of these realities accessed by the power of the secret place. If the devil robs you from the reality of the secret place, he has used one blow to destroy many aspects of your life. There are many of us right now, we are, we are at a crossroad. Listen, when you go to the secret place, you don't come out till you come out with answers. Many of us go to the secret place. We are not desperate enough. God does not visit casual people. Diligently seek Him. That you go back with answers and sit there and say, Lord, do you know, I read the story of Buddha. Buddha was a young Indian who was confused about life and why some things could not answer. It doesn't mean I believe in him. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying Buddha got angry, carried notebooks and went to the secret place and said he's not coming out again until whoever is the deity of the universe explained to him the mystery of life. He went there 
And whoever he met there and had an encounter changed his name to Buddha. He left there as an ordinary person. He came out as Buddha. This is in the negative. There is a way you can enter the secret place as a failure and say, Lord, it is me and you. I don't know what you are going to do, but Lord, my research card and your God is in this room. I'm not going out for your information. I brought one gallon of your God and one gallon of juice and one bag of pure water. My bathroom is there. I'm not going out. There must be an answer to my finances. Get relevant notebooks. You will stay for it. Let me give you a side effect. You will stay for a long time and not hear anything. But if you have the guts to insist, when he tests your resolve and see that you mean it like Jacob, he will come. He will come. He will come. Ask occultists. The Freemasons, one of the things they do when they are initiating people and all of that is to hit your forehead with an object that is very painful, that you can faint. Test your resolve. Do you want it that bad? And they test your resolve. When you are taking a student to NDA, sometimes from the gate, as you the mother just lets the student enter, from the gate, someone can just kick him and say, oh yeah, frog jump. You are watching your child doing frog jump and say, mommy, I want to go back. And then they say, don't mind him. And after five years, that, that weak, chicken-like guy can go to a fuel station and harass a thief and say, sit down first. They don't talk. I say, I will beat you here. You see my belt. I'm a military man. Something happened to him. Sometimes we pity ourselves too much to get the answers we are looking for. We are not desperate enough to stay. We want cheap power, cheap prosperity, cheap lifting, cheap influence. No, it doesn't work that way. There is a price. Are you ready to pray? Lord, grace to pay the price. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hey. There is a prize for the anointing. There is a prize for revelation. There is a prize for direction. There is a prize for greatness. The prize is the secret place. The same power. There is a prize for a flourishing ministry. There is a prize for a thriving business. Nekata baraka to shana malika da baria da ba. Shega da baraka tosh. Pray, Lord, I receive grace. Whatever it would take, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. He that dwells. In the secret place, the secret place, not the public place. You are beautiful in all your ways. When I find that way, it can bring glory to my life. You are beautiful in all your ways. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I kill every distraction in my life. Everything that can distract me from the secret place. Everything that can destroy my pace, I receive grace. Come on, pray. Shabakato sekete leva takataria. Shabrande katos kalabarakato sekete balataria. Tena mase ani arara na na ba. Tena mala na ba ni na ba. Tena mala na ni a. Tena mala na na ma tena na na.
Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, from heaven, let a fresh desire for your presence. It's not something you will do mechanically. Lord, a desire, a desire greater than my necessary food. A desire for your presence. More than a desire for, for preaching. More than a desire to succeed. Plant it in my heart and let it grow. That you become my desire. Shabaka posta barada bashele manadara. Lekete prekete leko sodo balada 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 bal. Hallelujah. Father. Open up the secrets of my destiny. There is something my eyes need to see so that my generation can see me. Open up, oh God. Let the book be open. Lift your voice and pray. Pray this prayer point with all your heart. What is the secret to your anointing upon my life? What is the secret to the spirit of revelation upon my ministry? What is the secret that you are giving me for wealth and abundance? What is the secret for influence? What is the secret for favor? Let the secrets of the kingdom be unveiled to me. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. But we are still going to pray this secret prayer. Listen. We are still going to pray it again. I heard Bishop Oyedeko say this many times. That people reign in life. Not based on the secrets available. On the one God has shown them. The Lord told me something. I think it was two years ago. You know we always teach that. The word of the Lord is powerful. Yes. But not every word of God blesses you. It is the one sent to you. Sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But a prophet was sent to one. If Elijah met another widow, it would be disobedience. Although he would give her breakthrough. Sent. Sent. The word for prosperity can come for everybody. But you must say, send me mine. Send me mine. It's a formula that will be added to you that will work for only you. Let me tell you, there is an equation in every man's success equation that was customized for him. You first start with the general understanding. It's like occult. You will be rising with it, but you get to a level where God says, no, the principles have taken you. Let me now show you your own. It's true. It works for finances. It works for ministry. I was preaching somewhere and a man of God told me something. He said, he said Pastor, um, we spend so much money on publicity. Is it alright if we stop? Because I hear you don't use... I said, don't stop. Oh. The general principle is that the word must be published. But how it will be published is a secret God gave me. I'm not saying posters are bad. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying it was... You copy it, you will run your church down. Sir, don't do it. There are things God can tell you. God can tell you every time enemies rise against you. Fast for one day and that's all. It's a secret to you. It may look like a stupid secret. But you will stand and see your landlord vowing that if by tomorrow... I, oh, you see, eh, brothers and sisters, when you hold these things, your life almost becomes magical. It's true. Look at Jesus. He had a secret. 
They took him to a cliff. All that was left is to push him. And he walked through them. Hi. There were times he parted the water. But for Jesus, he walked on it. If you were waiting for the water to part in Jesus' time, that strategy was not, it was of God, but not relevant for that occasion. He walked on the water. And he told Peter, now, we don't just part the water, we walk on it. There was something about the body of knowledge revealed to the people then that could only allow God give them miracles by passing through water. But now he said, you can walk on it. An angel appeared to me and he told me that there shall be no loss. An angel. Why are you confident like this, Paul? An angel appeared to me already. It's not because I'm not human. I've seen something. And they were taken safely to an island called Melita. There is something you see. People can be ranting up and down. Oh, don't worry. my. Dear. That's why sometimes when people send me text messages, Apostle, I saw an attack on your life. They may be right. But sometimes I just laugh it over. Boy! This man standing before you is surrounded by mysteries like chariots. There is what you must do. The moment they tell you, oh, somebody is about to attack your life and destiny. Do you know what to do? Is there a formula God gave you that you get up and say, Lord, this is it. And you manipulate life from the secret place and come out to your shock. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and makes through our life the savour of the knowledge of the glory of God. What you know in life, listen, matters. We're rounding up. In this kingdom, who doesn't like you is no problem. But who likes you matters. Who doesn't like you is not a problem. But who likes you matters. There are many people who are praying that God should clear them out of the way. They can be cleared. They are standing there by a covenant that even God respects. They have become gates to a system. The way you pass through is to tell God to touch their heart to like you. Praying that they get up is a foolish thing. Are we together? You may have a vice chancellor or a head of department or a dean. He may not be very born again. But that man sows a seed to a dangerous man of God who has already spoken and said no one will fight you. So you will fight that man and the word of him will fight you back. And you are wondering why is this guy so unbelieving yet immune? Because a word is over him. And if God gives you intelligence, he says, look, this man on his own can die in one day from your prayer. But he was wise enough to find an anointing that shields him. Because of that, what you need to pray is favor. And he said, Lord, grant me favor. And the man says, I don't know why I just like you. Come. There are people you don't cast away. You pray that God will touch their heart for your sake. Not everything is castable. You couldn't cast Caesar away. You could just pray that God will make a man touch him to release the body of Jesus. Are we blessed? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your people. My duty is to expose your people by your inspiration to the mysteries of the kingdom. Both that which you have granted to work in my life and that which is accessible in this kingdom. Lord, I pray that much more than the hearing of the ear, may the word be sent to the destinies of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you right now that an unusual grace for the secret place, an unusual grace for retreats, an unusual grace to spend time alone with God, let it be released to your life. Let there be a restoration of your first love for God, a restoration of your passion for prayer, revival in your life. If you once walked in any dimension of grace and the anointing, and for some reason it has gone down, I pray for you that from tonight, let the ambers, let the, let, let the coals of the spiritual fire within your life be set back ablaze in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying this prayer for you. 
this prayer of secrets lord we dedicate this week from now till the next koinonia meeting on friday lord let men beginning from tonight may they see and hear strange things about their destiny for many of you i declare strange angelic encounters they will come to your room they will come on your bed they will come to your ears some of you will continue koinonia in your dreams god will use my face to speak mysteries to you answer puzzles in your life business mysteries be unveiled leadership mysteries be unveiled ministerial mysteries be unveiled the secret to the new dimension of relevance be released to you the secret to dislodge the powers that fight your family may they be revealed to you in dreams and visions let an incense of wrath of worship rise from within you. To the God of all flesh, we bow, we worship. Let your name be lifted. tonight that your glory will fill this place and we ask tonight that you be enthroned in our lives I pray that you bless your people scattered all around this place and across different nations of the world different parts of this nation bless lift equip build let there be healings let there be deliverances I pray, O oh God, that your people will experience the fullness of your power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. You're very welcome. Please be seated. I want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online. They may not be able to see us, but they can hear our clap. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's honor them thanks to the power of technology. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want your spirit to be very sensitive. I want to, it's a prayer meeting. We are going to pray tonight. 
but I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly truly empower us you know I I sat back and I was thinking today just thinking of the the topics the teachings that God has brought from this place to the body of Christ especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the Lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom I was teaching the school of ministry students and um, I taught them something that I think is, is, is good for us to know I said um, every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation in every dispensation there is a dimension of the dealings of God that he apportions for that generation to know about him and it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of God that he has apportioned for a people and to be able to accurately teach God's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the Lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me I am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of God the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah Paul said I went up by revelation not by desire I went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is God's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of God to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when God is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of God displayed within a territory the revelation of God that is seen in a territory is not all that God is it is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided he will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time are we together now so God can step into a place like Zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough 
And so we continue to press daily. We press through knowledge. We press through desire. We take advantage of His grace and mercy. It's like a ladder. We keep climbing. And we are being transformed. We are being enlarged. Our capacities are... Uh, we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring it becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being and they are not lying because divinity is swallowing you up gradually and you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit. Like you see someone manifesting under the anointing. Ordinarily, you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed. When you see someone manifesting unusual strength, you know that that is another agency through him. Every time you align in the spirit... You help to advance the purposes of God. Let me tell you something. God is searching for men. He still is searching for men. Never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches, there are many programs happening, it means that God is finding a people. No. Alignment is not something that um, is a costly exercise. It's a costly sacrifice. Alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Because it will require pruning, it will require death, it will require discipline, it will require commitment. It will cost you your tears, it will cost you your appetites. But the end thereof is glory. So the Bible says that I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, right? Romans 8 and verse 18. I reckon, I come to terms with the fact that the sufferings, the constraints, of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, he gives you hope. He says, It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. When you watch a woman pregnant, the constraints, she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit, she may have to go through all kinds of constraints. But give her nine months in that condition. The moment she gives birth to a child, she becomes an object of celebration. People come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman. That's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting. Listen, let me tell you something. Spending time in the presence of God has value in every wise. It has monetary value. It has influence value. It has time redemption value. There is no time spent in the presence of God that is a waste. Away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in God's presence you are busy. People stay in God's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do. Most of the things we seek can only be found in His presence. Only be found in His presence. It pays to wait. And while we wait, it pays to hear Him. Because for every time He speaks, He redeems your future. For every time He speaks, He grants you access to rise that ladder of power, that ladder of grace. Hallelujah. It says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Not just through your desire. Grace, unction, we want power, we want to see the glory of God. The effulgence of His person. Only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say, I'm tired. No, you continue. Why? 
because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together i want you to pray in one minute and cry and say lord i'm here again Continue the training. Continue the dealing. Make me wiser. Make me better. Let me encounter another dimension of your anointing. Another dimension of your glory. Spirit of the living God, I have come tonight to align myself the more. This is the school of the Spirit. I have come. Make me powerful. Open my eyes. Activate my senses in the spirit. Place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate. Let me not pass as an ordinary person. Let a deposit of eternity be upon me. Hmm. Do something in my life that will cost me. It will, it will last me my lifetime. I have come to eat of the bread of the spirit. This is Bethel. The place where the Spirit of God will grant you fresh manna. Fresh manna. Fresh manna. He told the prophet, eat for the journey is far. You will need that mystery. You will need that revelation. The fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle. You will need to be prepared. The fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes. You must be equipped. So that before it comes, you know what to apply. That you have capacity to read the writings on the wall. And know what to do and what to say. He said Jesus himself knew what to do. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen. It is costly. To start looking for answers when the trouble comes. You see, sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome. You prepare for battle before battle. You don't prepare for battle during battle. Are we together? Don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth. And then you now run and try to find the mysteries. That can be able to navigate another path and cause your wife to give birth. Don't wait until they drive you from work. And then you now say, what is the mystery of favor again? No, you are too late. Surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. So that when the devil fires his arrow, before it gets to you, a revelation you have in store will arise. The, the shield, listen, that shield is a defense. Whether you are sleeping or awake, you have a bad dream. You are not even praying. A scripture just fires from your dream realm. He shall keep his angels charged over me. Don't react to things when they come. Are we together now? Yes. Don't wait until the day they tell you, oh, something happened and you are now panicking. No. No. God is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you. Someone comes and meets you and says, we're in trouble. And you say, what happened? Rain washed our house. You say, glory be to God. Don't worry. There is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint. Listen, your confidence in life is based on the, the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with. Fear is a product of ignorance. You will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation. This is the reason for fear. You never fear anything you have control over. Ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives. So we don't know whether we are going to live or die, we say. We don't know whether we will be rich or poor. We don't know whether we'll be successful or failures. We don't know whether people will favor us or not. God cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance 
and then tell you to not fear. No. The antidote to fear is knowledge. Knowledge. So that when your uncle looks at you and says, I can't help you again, I'm sorry. You know how, you say, uncle, thank you. Thank you for what you have done so far. Because you have a mystery that every good and perfect gift comes from above. It only comes through men, not from men. So if one man is not available, heaven is still available and he can find another man. That revelation alone settles you. So you are not jumping around and saying, Uncle, what can we do? That's a foolish and stupid way of speaking. It's like going to a filling station. All fuel comes from the ground, not the filling station. So if the filling station packs up, we know that there's still fuel in Nigeria. All you need to do is look for another filling station. Are we together now? May God grant us knowledge. See, the Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic, it's not because you are young or old. It's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman. It's not because you are living in the north or south. Uh -uh. It's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence. Nobody is born with confidence. It's a resultant effect of something. Joy is a product of something that you know. Fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I have such passion to see us grow in the spirit. So we don't just deceive ourselves and say, I'm a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not, is not something ambiguous. There are exact standards that can measure spirituality. Spirituality is not something that one man hides in the pocket and says, I am spiritual. No. There are clear spiritual standards. If they have been met, you are spiritual. If they have not been met, you are not spiritual. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. That's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in, week out. Because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here. Someone's life is dependent on what is shared here. This is an issue of life and death. It's not just an issue of a voluntary thing. No, it says they are alive to those who find them. That means those who don't find them can die. Are we together now? Life is spiritual. That's why the Bible says everything, listen. It says everything that is done in the house of God must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness. This is not my teaching, but I just felt a need to do that. Everything in the house of God must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing. Otherwise, it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow God's presence to find expression. If you are a cleaner in the house of God, you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set. You can't say, I'm not a member of prayer department. I'm just a keyboardist. This thing this gentleman is playing is not just music. If his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem. The sound that will come out from there will obstruct what God is doing in your spirit. He will be playing the same thing and wonder why he's not edifying you. Because he's playing his secret place. Amplifying it to people. He's not playing music. A gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual. You will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such canality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit. I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work, but if it is not done spiritually, the protocol people standing, if they are just standing like employed people, you see, that's why you are a pastor here. Let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts. Talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality. Nobody should serve in the house of God just because he's talented. No. Your talent is inconsequential 
as far as your spirituality is concerned, talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people. So we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very, very gifted people, but all kinds of spiritual obstructions. You see someone who holds a mic, beautiful voice, but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him. You love the song, but something about the voice, there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it. Something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying is responsible for that. That's why we pray. That's why we wait in his presence. It's not just to increase skill. It's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven. And everything that is communicated to you, even if it is something you have had before, it comes with a fresh anointing. It comes with a fresh atmosphere. And it can cause transformation. You are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of God. No. Any church, any body that cannot host the presence of God in their meetings, capture the presence of God, is a cinema. It's a complete waste of time. So everything must be done under the anointing. We have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time. Be spiritual. As an usher, you are not just holding people under the anointing. You are not just cleaning seats. You are spiritual. Are we together now? Someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service. Not just your service. The spirituality of it. Someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching, my preaching. Not just the dispensing of gifts, but the spirituality of it. That's what can bring the transformation and bring the miracles. I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves it's not so much about skill. It's not so much about action, but the, the fire the passion, the presence, the glory that backs up what we do. That's what produces the results. Tonight, I want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer. Pay attention, I'm going to share something with you that will bless your life. The altar of prayer. I want us to understand the mystery of altars. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. Take my praise, oh God, take my praise, hallelujah, listen, the body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer, when it comes to the issue of warfare, when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm, there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations. That's what I've been seeking to do, to teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization
to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will. Every other entity needs a system of authorization. Are we together now? Altars. Most people do not know what altars are. And for most people, when you hear altar, you just think, oh, it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way. You, you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars. There is no great man who does not understand this. Whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing. But let me tell you, there is no man doing business in this kingdom or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars. Pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in, in, in ways that will shock you. An altar is a system of authorization. I want to share a few things with you about altars. An altar is a system of authorization. An altar is not just a monument. It is a system of authorization. An altar is a platform. Write it down. Where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. An altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. I'm taking out time for us to write this because I want us to understand it. I said an altar is a system of authorization. And then an altar is a platform. Where on legal grounds, the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm. There are other illegal routes. There are other illegitimate platforms. But the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar. Because according to the law of territory, a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory The first death recorded in the Bible happened on account of altars. Two men, brothers, went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms. That was way before the Old Testament. Adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of God. And it's not the way it is today. There and then you will know whether what you did worked or not. And the Bible says, Abel did something. And Cain did something too. And all of a sudden the sacrifice of Abel ascended the heavens. Are we together now? And then for Cain, nothing happened. And then Cain killed his brother. And blood spilled upon the earth. And he thought it was over. But the Bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit. Something about that activity called the presence of God. And God said, Cain, there is a discussion going on in heaven. But this discussion is between me and blood. So what is going on? He said, am I my brother's keeper? He said, ah, don't tell lies. There is a witness standing in heaven here. That blood, a symbol of an altar, is granted me authorization to probe you. And because of that, I'm going to curse you. Judgment still happened even after Abel died. Listen very carefully to what I'm teaching you. Supernatural system of authorization. An altar, let me give you one more definition. It's where covenants are activated and maintained. An altar is the platform where covenants are both activated 
and maintained. A covenant cannot work without an altar. It is an altar that gives life to a covenant. It's impossible for altars to work. Covenants to work without an altar. An altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance. The potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery. That's what an altar is. It gives life to a covenant. Now write this down please. Altars can be physical monuments. Altars can be institutions. And altars can be people. Altars can be physical monuments. Like we had in the Old Testament. They would erect stones. Altars can be institutions. Like the Jerusalem temple that was built by Solomon. He said, oh God, if anybody faces this temple and prays, hearken to that person's prayer. Not because of the rightness of the prayer, but a covenant that was enacted there. And an altar was raised to that effect. The reason why salvation, the covenant of salvation can work, is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth, in heaven. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar. That is still speaking today. That is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whether in you are sleeping, whether you are awake, it kicks that reality, you will be saved. Because there is an altar that eternally secures that. There are many platforms that God has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what I'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not Bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something God is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order an altar anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion 
must function from the standpoint of an altar. Tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer. The ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many. Either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer. But scattered around scripture, all through the Bible, are scriptures that encourage believers to pray. And it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1, the Bible says he spake this parable to the end. That means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson. And the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Always. Always. Not a circumstantial activity. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. In Matthew chapter 21, when you read from verse 13, the Bible says Jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry. And in verse 13, chapter 21, he scattered everywhere and said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. It's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word. But it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer. When the devil wants to deceive you, he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word. And then he indoctrinates you and carries, takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm. And all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power, no grace, no efficiency. Every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer. Any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last. It's impossible. The ministry of Jesus started as a prayer ministry. The moment he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was driven of the Spirit. 40 days and 40 nights, traveling in prayer. And the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. All of a sudden, his fame began to spread. Devils would fly around and say, no, 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 no. You have come to destroy us before our time. The ministry of prayer. In James chapter 5, verse 16, please give it to us. James chapter 5, verse 16. I want you to understand this. Tonight is an admonishment and then we are going to pray. James 5, verse 16. He says, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed. Then he says, the effectual prayer of a righteous man, he says, availed much. Availed much. Amplified says it is dynamic in its working. It can produce results. And we are going to examine these results. That the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk. It's not just an exercise in futility. It's not just a religious system to feel spiritual. That every time men pray, there is an effect. Now, theologically speaking, the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, are we together now? A son in the flesh now, a, a generation, now was passing that place and the night time came. And he felt, look, let me just lie down and sleep. And the Bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep. He didn't pray for an encounter. He didn't beg for an encounter. The moment he slept, the Bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening. The angels ascending, descending. It was like a, a portal, a ladder. And at the top of it was God himself. And he was surprised. When he woke up, he said, wow, this is a portal. This is the gate of heaven. I saw something that happened. 
a portal, an altar. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. Now watch this. It's because Jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect. Do you know that whether or not Jacob slept there, you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason, cross across that place and something happens to you. All of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared. You didn't pray. Now you are wondering what happened. Now you don't know. It was Jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing. The same way Elijah, when he was about to leave, he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically. He went beyond the Jordan and he said, Elijah asked, I'm about to leave. And right before his eyes, he saw chariots. When Jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven, he knew exactly where to stand. When he, they watched him and he began to rise. There are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit. Not visions. Physical places. A man can stand here today and have encounters. Whether you are the prophetic or not. Which is understand this. Many people understand this. I wish I had time to teach you on altars. Because I would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region. It opens up an altar. Consistency of practice within a region. That, that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized. The moment you practice something consistently, you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on. So if I keep killing people in a particular region, I don't need to invite any spirit. I create a portal. The moment a spirit comes in partnership with me, that becomes an altar. That's why in many regions, many campuses, they have different regions. Some have prayer mountains, some have, we used to have years ago um, in the campus, there's somewhere they call Long Tennis Court. That was a physical, solid portal. That's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes. And go there and lie down and say, oh God, if you don't help me, I'm dead. And by the next morning, there is a miracle. You find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities. Over many years, there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified. Angelic activities became so much there. It was, it was like how you do home cell. Because there are visitations and many members are within a region. You dedicate a place and say, look, all of you within this region, you can freely find expression here. Consistency can open up a portal. Are you learning something tonight? That's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals. Every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimension. You see, let me tell you, consistency attracts the realm of the spirit. Consistent. Ask those who practice other religions. You know how they invoke spirits? Enchantments. The same word repeated over a long period of time. How do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages? The people keep dancing, doing the same thing for hours. And then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point. The spirit component of that activity has come. I'd like you to say, Lord, open my eyes. Say it. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. There is a law in the dealings of God with men. And it says, whatever you yield yourself to, it says you will become a slave of that thing. Have, have you, have you, are we together? If I practice obedience consistently, I have yielded my members to obedience, I become a slave to obedience. Are we together now? You see, watch this. If I steal this handkerchief, watch this. If I steal this handkerchief out of my volition, it's not enough 
to bring the spirit of theft in my life. No. If I do it again, and I do it again, that I don't know I'm invoking a mystery by my consistency. A time will come, the spirit that operates on men will say, I'm being invited within a territory. It will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is. The same way, if I begin to pray, I may not feel comfortable, but as I'm praying, I'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit, of the spirit of prayer and supplication. A day will come in that place, that dimension will be revealed in me. Supernaturally. Are you learning something? Because you see, not all altars were consciously built, but they are still altars. So it is, when I say altars that are destroying you, it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say, if you don't tell us what you have done, we will beat you. No, he may be innocent. This is where the prophetic ministry must be guided. Because every time we talk of altar, they think it must be traceable to a real experience. No. The mysteries that you do consistently are building altars. And they eventually become invitations for spirits. Whether the spirit of God or any kind of demon spirit. Have you had an experience? I'm not saying you should do it. But you've seen it in ministries. Where somebody can come, no church service. Just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar. And roll. Maybe for a child. And go back and have triplets. Now, question. Was anybody preaching? But because the, the power and the presence of God has found expression upon that ground for a long time. You have invited, you have invoked a dimension. Whether service is at work or not, that portal remains open. All that it takes is your faith. Once your faith meanders that atmosphere, it happens to you. Samuel was an altar. He didn't have an altar. He was an altar. You never came near Samuel and went back the same. No. A young man came around Samuel and stood naked, prophesied morning till night. That's an altar. When Saul went and met Samuel, they were looking for the donkey. As soon as they saw Samuel, they knew their lives were going to be altered. I told you altars are not just physical monuments. You can be an altar. And that's one of the things that prayer does. You don't build a monument. Your life becomes the activation of self Listen, the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life, but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence, listen, you have become an altar. Spiritual activities can be happening around you. So that as a living altar, I activate possibilities just by walking. You come around me and something happens to you. I didn't directly pray for you. You didn't even know you had that problem. But an atmosphere that I was carrying implicated you. Why is prayer important? Why do we have to build an altar of prayer? Three reasons very quickly. Number one, prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with Him. Write it down. Prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with Him. The Bible is very clear that the communion of the Spirit, the fellowship of the Spirit, what we call koinonia, must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God. And that system of koinonia is through prayer. Prayer is one of God's authorized system. Not the only authorized system, but one of the major authorized system 
for communion and fellowship. Luke chapter 6. Let's take a few scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. Please give it to us. Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. Then we'll look at Matthew 26. Verse 36 and down to 39. It's actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39. Quickly. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Look up everyone please. It says, And it came to pass those days, speaking about Jesus now, that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Communion. Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service. Remember he was God. He still is God. But he went to spend time all night communing. Communion. Give us Matthew. Matthew 26 and verse 36. Matthew 26 verse 36. Then come at Jesus with them. Listen. This was, uh, his passion was about to start. Then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And let's watch what the Bible calls prayer. And he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to, to be sorrowful and very heavy. 38. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. Please continue quickly. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, saying, This sounds like a communication, a conversation. My father, if it be possible, let this call pass off me. When you read down to verse 44, he prayed the same thing three times. Prayer is God's authorized system of communion, not just a platform for petitions. Prayer is how power is transferred to men. It's an authorized system of communion. It's your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse. In the place of prayer, that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the Father as usual and he says, Father, the hour has come. Watch communion to prayer. The hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son will bring glory to you. And then he began to converse. Look at all the platforms. Till today, listen. Till today, how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer. The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for the saints. Why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand? It's a system. It's not about proximity. It's a system of communion and communication. If you are not a man of prayer, you are not a woman of prayer, you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um i'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear god is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him. I was counseling a couple some, I think, I don't know if it was last week. And um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters. Maybe they are even here listening to me. And they held a little baby. As soon as the baby shouted from outside, the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby. And I said, Koinonia. That's intimacy. Because there is a union. That baby is sucking from the same mother. Their interaction. The mother did not train herself to hear the voice. She was implicated by that koinonia. 
So anywhere, she, there were many people, families with their children. But when she had her own, he said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Meaning if you cannot ask, hear his voice. Find out whether you are his sheep or not. Don't assume you are his sheep. Assumption is costly in the school of intimacy. You must verify that there is contact between you and God. There are pastors that don't pray. So they get angry. They think the manifestation of the power of God is magic. There are dimensions impartation will not give you. You must dig your well by yourself. You must create an altar, a system. You must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit. You must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act. It's, it's like a tailor-made system of God reaching you. God must know how to reach you on serious informations. God must know how to reach you on trivial informations. He must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. That place of training is the secret place. I will never trade anything for my time with him. That's where men are built. That's where there is an exchange. See, let me tell you. Holding a mic and teaching is not difficult. Holding a mic and preaching is not difficult. But communicating life, that one is a derivative of your altar. That's why we sleep in church. That's why our churches are full of dry bones. From the preacher to those listening. All dry bones. People stand and talk. They say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you. Because there is no altar. They are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit. Number two, quickly. Why do we need the altar of prayer? Prayer creates a legal platform for God. Prayer creates a legal platform for God, angels, and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access. Prayer creates a legal platform. Mark the word legal. It has to be legal. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. The dealings of God with men are on legal grounds. That's why God could not just pronounce men justified. The system had to be followed to the latter. Prayer creates a legal platform for God, angels, and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men, whichever you want to write a platform for entrance legally i know that many of you are surprised why should god almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm he limited himself in the creation of man let me show you two scriptures that i think will bless you psalms 115 verse 16 it's a popular scripture in the body of christ psalms 115 and verse 16 then give us Ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31. Psalms 115 verse 116. Can we read it together? One to read. The heaven, even the heavens, other versions say the heaven of heavens, are the Lord's. Read on. But the earth as a territory, has he given to where? Watch this. Let me give you a little explanation. If, if a Jimmy has a house, are we together? And he decides to rent that house to me. Now, it is true that it is still his house. But does he have a right to just enter anytime again? No. Even if he comes to that house, although it is your house, but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you. So even as the landlord, you will still knock. And I have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy and you will still go. So God is still the Lord of all creation. But he carved out a domain of his kingdom, apportioned it to man. And it became scripturally incorrect for God to come to the earth without a man permitting him. That's why the Holy Spirit had to move 
Michael, Gabriel to come and ask for permission from Mary before Jesus entered her womb. Mary could not just see her womb. No, 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 no. It was a discussion. This is what you want to do. Can your womb be available? The, what was the permission? Be it unto me. I authorize you. How shall these things be? Don't worry about the dynamics. Your womb will just... Don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding. Be it unto me. And he had to go to Joseph and say, Joseph, you are about to see something strange in your wife. Now, I know that is going to shock you. But please, 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 don't drive her. There is a mystery she's carrying and Joseph calmed down. Look at how God had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission. Permission. One by one. While he was doing that, he was breathing upon Anna the prophetess to keep praying. Breathing on Simeon in the temple to keep praying. John the Baptist who will baptize and ordain Jesus. His father wanted to play with redemption. He thought he was just playing with a sacrifice. An angel appears to him and says, Mr. Man, your wife is going to have a child. The name is John and he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said, no, 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 no. This guy would disallow or shut his mouth. He's a priest, meaning there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office. Shut his mouth so that he will not say anything because words are padlocks and are keys. It can disallow and allow reality. So he said, shut his mouth. This, this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing. And they shut his mouth, not as wickedness, as a strategy to make sure John arrives so that Jesus will be commissioned. When John was born, they said, what shall we name him? The wife said, John. They said, no, we've not had this name. Then they went to the dumb father now. Mr. Man, what was the last thing when you spoke with the angel? What did you hear? And he wrote on the book, John. Is that a prayer? And his mouth opened. God said, now you can say anything you want to say. You have authorized heaven. Now, watch this. Look how hard it is for God to find expression in the earth. He must go around. That's why I taught you about the gift of men. God cannot be the author of death. Knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him. For 430 years, God was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer. Not if he promised Abraham captivity for 400 years. But even God became limited for 30 extra years until Moses was trained. Are you blessed? John the Baptist found himself in the wilderness. The requirement to ordain Jesus. He ate locusts and wild honey. Had sheep camel, you know, clothes and all of that. And he came out and started baptizing. Baptized Jesus Christ. And that was all. And Jesus began his ministry. Listen. Every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life, it is not that God is limited. It is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized, God can do nothing about it. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. The earth has he given to the sons of men. Elijah knew this, that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men. And he didn't go to beg God. He went and said, I lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens. So I lock it up and I put the key in my pocket. Listen to what he said. There would not be rain except at my word. But the Bible, James, Apostle James, had a revelation of what he did. He said, don't think he just spoke grammar. He went and locked himself and prayed earnestly. He was a man of like passion. But he allowed God. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30 and 31. Please, quickly. Many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role. We have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance. And I search for a man among them. Listen, who is talking here? God to his prophet. Why will God be looking for men with over how many 
people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today i sought for a man among them that should make up what a hedge a gap they have violated something they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness i'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but i'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that i want satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty and god keeps watching it ravage you for decades and god is saying i'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise i was until i learned this i was surprised how god would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah but god can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what, what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me matthew 6 he was teaching them the beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as i hear you say before my ears so will i do please leave it there i sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for what not just for an individual for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so let's see what would happen in 31 pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even pharaoh and his army slain by the sword says the lord ezekiel 22 you're giving us a wrong scripture here That's what I gave you, right? Ezekiel 22, 30, 31. Please correct it and let's have it quickly, media. Are we there? Please help, help whoever is working. We need some level of accuracy. The scripture, I'm looking for the scripture that, therefore, have I poured out. That is what we just read. Therefore, have I poured out my word indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have i recompensed upon their heads in other words it looks like i'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh god my name is john we are still dying and god is saying don't look at me as a wicked person i while i'm i'm pathetic there is a legal system operating this operation and somebody must arise and become a, an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen god is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening there are manipulations that are sending strange incense and we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist and they are helping to destroy the world But he must find a people. That's why men are a serious business to God. Many of us act unassisted. Many pastors act unassisted. The realm of the spirit is available to assist. But until we call. Until we call. Pray in tongues for one minute and say, Lord, I call you. I call you into my life and into my situation. I don't assume you are aware. I authorize you. Shabras kataba segete kalabaru sa sibriasha. Man de kres kataba kas shabras kitabaliata. Lord, if you don't step in, something will go wrong in my life. My family is in trouble. For thirty years, nobody has risen in my lineage. Something is wrong. Every year someone is dying 
Yet there are prophetic words over my family. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shapras Katako Sibaria Sakato Bashiba. Ten graduates, no one is employed. Ten ladies, no one married. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto Sobakai. Lekete kota sapres kato shiparatia. Everyone in my family fails. When a miracle is about to come, another mystery kicks in. Everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock. It happened to my grandmother. It happened to my mother. Now the devil wants it to happen to me. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen, let me tell you. I studied my life, I studied my lineage, I studied my family. And I saw things that I knew were not funny. I knew that those things were activations. And if I were to answer the call of God upon my life and prevail, something must happen. An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes, when you need a high anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduates, my mother graduates, ten of us in our family graduates. Nothing is working. It will continue like that because there is something making God look like a wicked person. I sought for a man in your family. It's not that he cannot convert everybody to become a Christian. I sought for a man. Who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders. Wanting to deliver the nation of Israel from Egypt. Imagine how the heart of God bled when he saw the soldiers of Pharaoh weeping God's covenant people. Man, who is the man that I will send? In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel stood before the dry bones. I thought God would say, bones, come back to life. He said, Ezekiel, you know this law of territory. I can't speak and it will just happen. So I will tell you. I will speak from heaven to you. Then you speak now in the earth. I prophesied as I was commanded. When God spoke, the bone did not move. When he prophesied as he commanded, all of a sudden there was a sound. Oh, God spoke to me in a vision. I, I had that dream. And God said, it's over. And you get up and just smile. You are joking. It will never be over. It was over in the realm of the spirit. What you do with that encounter is to stand up. Put that word and say, I legislate. I agree with you. Lord, my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement. That's why we have many dreams that never come to pass. You see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit. You see zero in the physical. You see a job in the realm of the spirit. You see demotion in the physical. God told you his intention in the realm of the spirit. Your carelessness aborted it in the physical. Take seriously what I'm saying. The same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family and you get up and just keep quiet. And then the day something devastating happens, say, hey, I saw this thing. That's a pain in the heart of God. Because he, he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit. Searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness. When God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets, they were angry. Read your Bible. They said, God hid this thing from me.
Number three. What is the third? Purpose of the altar of prayer. The altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion. God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance. God gave man dominion over creation. It will take man exercising it. And prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion. The Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet. So although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God, but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense. Because before your arrival, another altar had been raised. And so it will take you enforcing dominion. I may come from this family, but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened. No. The same way someone is born of a millionaire and all of a sudden the child starts enjoying the benefits even before being aware. That is the implication. Are we together now? A woman may be, for instance, um, having a particular biological disease maybe a hepatitis or something and give birth to an innocent child and they say that child also has hepatitis did the child ask for it no genetic condition is the same way what stopped your father stopped your mother you laughed at them and quarreled them is still waiting for you because until it is destroyed listen let me tell you something about altars for as long as an altar is, is alive, the covenant will keep working. That's the concept of priesthood. Priesthood is a system to keep altars alive. So that covenants will remain in force. So that certain dimensions will continue to operate. There are many things that will not obey you until you force them to. There are many things in your life. Your destiny will not open up just because you think you should have a good life. That's a joke. It's a costly joke. You will not get a job just because you got first class. You will not be promoted just because you think you are due. Nothing is fair in this life. Everything that happens to you is what you force to happen through knowledge. Apostle, life is so unfair to us in the family. I sympathize with you, but this is the wickedness in the world that we live in. Listen, if you want to take your portion in this life, you are going to take it by enforcing compliance. Your church will not grow just because you think you are a nice pastor. Being nice is not the seed for results. The ability to exercise dominion. Are we together? Yes. It takes prayer. There are many people who don't pray. They just get up and, please come. You just see someone and, and you say, Pastor, pray for me. And your ego is on the line. And you know that you have not sustained power with God. No altar of prayer. And you just believe you just lay your hand. And you lay your hands in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, yes, it said. Yes, the Bible said. But it takes your life to activate that reality. The Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick. God said it. I believe it. It settles it. You are a joker. You are a big joker. No, it doesn't settle it. No, it doesn't settle it. There is a dynamic to manifestation. Let's not mock ourselves. And you try to pray for this person. And all of a sudden, number one, he's not healed. Number two, it backfires on you. Are we together now? All of a sudden, you find out that the same thing you try to pray for him for, the tragedies and calamities in his life, you brought yourself through ignorance. And the whole thing backfired on you. 
We are walking in an environment that is surrounded with altars. They give you a job and you enter the company. You are not the CEO. You are walking there. You don't know what spiritual backings have been invoked over that environment. Until you create your own climate, you will be a victim of the default climate. There are people who fraternize with the devil. I will employ people to work for me, but they will never rise above me. So if the man goes down, everybody will go down to still keep him above them because it's a covenant. Now you got a job. Fresh from the university, your blood is hot. Everybody dances around church. You carry your certificate. And all of a sudden, you are earning 300,000, but you cannot bring out 10,000. You are not a drunkard. You don't pursue women. You don't know what happened. And all that swallows up that thing. That's what I'm telling you what has happened to many of our parents. So we think the solution is promotion. Oh God, promote me. Then your salary is now 400,000. The effect is still the same. But a woman who went to a man of God and is joining a little prayer group in her ignorance is flying Akara somewhere in the junction. And with that Akara, she trained seven children in school. It's not Akara. She was assisted by the realm of the spirit. No, sir. You don't train children with, with frying Akara there. You can come and meet that woman and beg her for a loan of 100,000. And she will laugh. She will say, I'm coming. She will enter the room and bring it out. Yet you claim that you are doing a white collar job. And the altar fights you. Listen. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit, an altar prevails. Believe what I'm telling you. Zaria has an altar. The effects of the altar in Zaria is predictable. You see it in the civilization of the people. You see it in what happens to people. The marginalizations. That people never rise to certain dimensions. You came to Zaria and just thought it's all about going to church. No. You create your climate. You create your climate. That's why it says, Yea, though I walk, though I walk through a valley that has the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I carry another climate. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So you are in a place where people cannot live up to 40 years you know you are aware in your village you've seen people dying like chickens but you come with another order you understand that the altar of prayer is also an altar that can contend with everything and you are enjoying long life you are enjoying grace the person who married earliest in your family was 45 are we together and you look you say no. You get married, then you must spend five or ten years to have your first child. If you sit down and keep watching it and don't cry for assistance and don't force compliance, it will never work. I watch people and my heart bleeds at their perception of God, which is based on their consistent sufferings. They conclude that God is not a merciful God, but he says, I suck for a man. That through the altar of prayer, you can nullify certain activities, legal ordinances that have been erected to speak. You will be dreaming to believe there's nothing speaking against you now. No, sir. You have lived too long to have created one by mistake. You have lived too long on earth. If you are up to one years old, welcome to the reality of this life. There has to be something speaking. The Bible says the sin of disobedience is like what? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. What is the operation of witchcraft? So we all want to rise. It's a year of triumph. And there is. You think that the whole thing is your grandfather or grandmother. And the day you hear that they are dead, you rejoice. The priesthood died, but the altar is still alive. You see that? And the altar is fine and good, doing well. 
That's why you find out the solution is not just to kill people around. The solution is through spiritual intelligence. To lift up a spiritual fortification that vetoes everything. Brothers and sisters, you will leave heaven on earth. All of a sudden, they will watch you. <laughs> You've been in Zamfara for three years. But you are returning as if you are in the UK. You can fly to UK with that altar. It will wait for you at Heathrow Airport. As soon as you are landing, you enter and all the doors close. People who never knew you are still manipulated by that altar to work against you. And you thought it's just something in Nigeria. And at the end of it, you come back after five years looking like a thief. Where have you been? UK. Are you sure? Yes. Why are you like this? You know the way life is. People smuggle their way and pass through rivers and deserts all to go to Germany and UK. Whereas they think that's the greener pasture. The greener pasture is the altar you raise. That speak. That speak. That speak. Until Jesus came, there was a universal altar speaking against man. Vengeance. Vengeance. But when Jesus came, he established another altar that spoke better promises. Better things. I cannot live walking and living my life to chance and hoping that things will be alright. I know things will not be alright. If they will be alright, you must create it. You must create it. So I enforce compliance. Will the devil leave you because he thinks God anointed you? No. No. Satan is not that cheap. You are going to contend. That's why he said, put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor. There is a devil somewhere that will destroy your life, destroy your ministry, destroy your business, destroy your destiny. You get married to a very lovely wife. You love her with all your heart. They ask both of you, will you love yourself? You say yes. The moment you married, everybody brought their altars in holy matrimony. Now, you are nice people. This altar was designed to scatter the finances of whoever is standing with you. And all of a sudden, a good woman, but you find out that your entire life starts going down. And if you meet a, a prophet who is not sound in scripture, he will tell you your wife is the reason for your failure. Based on prophetic insight, he has seen that there is an altar associated with her. It's not a lie that is responsible for that downfall. The individual may be the nicest person in the world. But the altar will not change. Please hear what I'm teaching you. And there are men. No matter what happens. If they marry. Maximum three years. The wife must die. And all of a sudden. From the day. The dear lady got married. He may be a pastor. Apostle. Prophet. How many men of God. Have altars fighting them. They look around. And they claim nothing is happening. And they assume. That because they took on the call for ministry, God is too generous to allow them. It's a joke. No, sir. And this man gets married to this dear lady. And all of a sudden, she starts sleeping. Mysterious sicknesses she never had. Heart palpitations. She will feel being pressed. And she says, my husband, I don't know what is wrong. I'm at, since we got married, I say, are you trying to say I'm a witch? Look at what the altars are causing. Then two of them go for counseling. And they meet a man of God who is sincere but no spiritual intelligence. And he says, look, it's how marriages are. Just take it easy. Pray together. And it doesn't mean what he's saying. And they say, okay. He say, hug your wife in front of me. They now hug themselves. Hold my hand, darling. They go back home. The altars say, well, come back. By evening, that man has slapped her again. Remember, he promised in the presence of the pastor not to do it again. But the altars... Brothers and sisters, that's why God puts meetings like this. Because you can be sitting down now not knowing the deliverance that is happening. You just feel something left me. I don't know what happened. And you go back and you who would have, you would have blown somebody out of anger. You find out that that force that comes upon you when you are angry. That can make you insult anybody is no longer there. Because there is an altar. This ministry you see is an altar. We don't have an altar. This is it's a, it's an altar. 
That's why you can talk against it in your secret place and start going down. Nobody is aware because the altar speaks. All of a sudden, a man of God will teach them how to raise altars and they will raise an altar of prayer and come and say, Look, we are not bad people. The devil is confusing us here. You are a good woman, I'm a good person. We did not negotiate where to come from. And all of a sudden, day one, Shekato Praskataya. Now watch what is happening. They are holding their hands and praying. After that day, they just feel good, but nothing really happens. I told you consistency is how spirits are attracted. Day two, Shekato the, the man doesn't want to pray. But she says, honey, remember, we are on a project here. You know what we, are le we have left at home. Let's do this thing. After one week, two weeks, somebody starts having a dream somewhere. After one week, a spirit must appear to somebody somewhere and try to warn somebody. An effect is being created in the realm of the spirit. It's not a sign of weakness. You can't sit upon hot fire and act as if it's not. It can't be for too long. Listen to me. That's what is happening to some of you now. It was after your seven days of prayer You had a strange dream you have never had You thought it's a sign that you are losing It's a sign of victory Something is happening in the realm of the spirit All of a sudden You went to sleep and you saw a vision Of your mother when she was young Your father when he was young The spirit of God is trying to show you something Follow him But that's when the spirit of slumber comes God keeps saying for one month Wake up by two o'clock there's something I'm doing in your life. After two weeks, you don't wake up again. You see how we cheat ourselves and you don't know that you are on the path of deliverance. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign. You reign, you reign, hello, you reign, you reign, you reign, hello, you reign. Listen, I promise you, if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, many of you, as soon as you go back, you will see the dream you will have this night. The devil hates what you are hearing. Because this is the age long mystery that has kept people in your family. Educated, but it's like they are not educated. A pastor, you are blessing people, but you never rise yourself. Do you know why? Because your victory is tied to your altar, not just your service. Your altar. I created an altar that is independent of Koinonia. And I said, No devil will come and destroy me. No. No. Watch this. Please come again. The two weeks we are praying. Shabra kato soto bas, lebre koto shabaya. We are praying. We are praying. We are fasting. Something starts happening. One day there will be a breaking point in the realm of the spirit. If that prayer were two hours, a day will come. It will become a vigil. Not by, not because you like it. There will be. You will break open a portal in the realm of the spirit, and two hours prayer will become prayer till morning and your child will come and meet you and say that i saw a man in white and i saw the man doing something on your head spiritual activities are happening in the family all of a sudden you start seeing doors opening you love your wife like never before the devil told you the secret is to marry another one no sir you marry another one the altar is still the same there are pastors the altars that fight them and in first days of their ministry something happens people start living they have raised so many people but have not been raised by themselves there are altars I've seen it fight people I've seen it fight people I know these altars fought me for years you go to sleep a strange woman appears to you and sleeps with you in the dream you get up and say, sorry, I don't know what is happening. Someone is about to marry you. Here comes the stranger again. What is bringing the stranger? Have you ever asked? 
you relocate to another house, he still looks for you and comes. They are about to promote you in the office. All of a sudden, your physical document disappears. Physical document. How many students seated here? That's the mystery behind the results you are seeing. The ugly results that you are seeing. You love God and you are sincere. But that's the mystery behind the demonic things you see on that board. You are not that dull. You write your exams and go back. The altars continue writing things. Continue writing things. I know what I'm saying. Listen to me. You hear people coming here with four points. They were not born that way. They have tapped into a higher covenant. You see them surprised by their own results. They know it's not their efforts. That's why people join certain ministries. Join certain men of God. See people partner with certain anointings. This is the mystery of partnership. When you partner with an anointing, you access the covenant. The covenant, not the promise. The covenant. There are parents today, the moment you are 50 years arthritis, you get up one morning, father cannot walk, mother cannot walk, their entire pension is spent on it. It's not sickness, it's a programming. An altar is accurate with digital precision, regardless of your foreknowledge. It will work. It will work. I have seen it destroy families. I have seen it destroy ministries. That's why certain ministries remain small. No matter how anointed they are, an anointed man with fire on his head, but he will not cross certain boundaries. Once they reach 200, something must happen. A wrong news will spread around. A scandal must come. Whether it's true or not. Have you not seen students their last and final exams, they will go and the spirit will start moving them, carry something to the exam hall. They don't want to, but it's an altar. You are too weak to fight it. You will promise that you will not take it. And you take it. As soon as you are sitting, they just catch you. And they said your entire six, seven years cancelled. Brothers and sisters, it's an altar. There are families that as a family, they are victims of abuse. Everybody. Mother, father, brothers. All the daughters will eventually meet a man of God somewhere. And all the man of God will do is to destroy them. It will happen. They are scattered in every place, but their experiences are the same. You will see them and like them. But at the end of it, you must leave them with pain. They think is that the ministry is bad, but the issue is the altar. There are altars. You give birth to men, they must die. They must die. Something must kill them. No matter how healthy they are, they must die. Brothers and sisters, I have seen this evil. It exists. Tonight we are going to pray. Are we together? When it's time, I'm not going to give you a prayer point. When it's time to pray, we are going to pray. Tonight you are going to erect. Many of you, as you pray tonight, you will see what will begin to happen to you. I want us to lift up a fire in this place tonight. And say, Lord, this demon that molests me in my sleep, I can't be pretending that it's not there again. These animals that come to me in my sleep, no! I started a business well. Why is it that I start good things? Something evil must come. Lift your voice and pray. La kata 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 shake the back of the cover. Ma brato so prete shabara da bala da bala da bala. Oh, a good warfare tonight. For 
for the sake of my children. Oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Oh God of Jeshurun, that rise upon the wings of the wind. Arise. Arise. Be serious tonight. I tear down altars. I use prayer as a system of authorization. This cosmos stop. in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus tonight I stand on behalf of myself and my family and I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny I tear it down tonight lift your voice and pray Separate of God's sort of us. I say now, all that of delay, all that of barrenness, all that of failure. Rakato koto berekenes, le berekoto sort of berekenes. yourselves to two. Find, find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight I invoke the blood let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access I have given any altar of darkness shall not come out. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives 
Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I cause you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny. Because of where I'm coming from, I prophesy tonight, your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories. Associated with territories. I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. But it looks like it has not manifested. Because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy 
I call you back to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. And watch the God of wonders. Authorize the God of heaven. And watch restoration happen in your destiny. Restore relationships. Restore finances. Restore money. Restore ministries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen. I don't care how many. Call it. Listen. You are going to call them one by one. And say I stand as an altar. And I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out from this wasteful living. Call them. Shake your hand and I'm a good Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell Him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Mark the post of the most shabada. La play the get of God's son of the second one. I declare it. Mark the post of the second one.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you may not realize what is happening to you. Please, I don't want you to idolize this teaching. No. It's not about religiosity. It's about proper understanding and application. So it's not just coming to lie down here. No, 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 no. The altar is a revelation. We are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives. Listen, because many of us here, the only time you pray is when you are together with people. Satan started attacking you. He gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life. He will never attack it at once. He can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to pray, I receive it right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Fire, fresh fire on my altar. Fresh grace to pray. Fresh grace to fast. Fresh grace to intercede. Fresh grace for warfare. I command every dead prayer life around my life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project. But now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This, this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask. That you manifest yourself once again in my life. Holy Spirit, I cry for intimacy afresh with you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Intimacy. Spirit of the living God, do not be far from me again. Pray. Pray. Let it not be that you are just a stranger. We were closer than this. And something happened. Pray. Restore that intimacy. Restore that sweet fellowship that I once had with you. Fellowship that nothing in this world could be compared. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Jalakosi Akata. I tell you there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies. I pray for you now. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above all names. Everyone hearing me and standing here, whether inside or outside, you have prayed. If there is any altar as I speak now that is speaking against your life, at the count of three, I command those altars to catch fire.
fire right now. Please get ready. The power of God will come on people. One, two, three. I command those altars now. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just, I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here. Failure. It has nothing to do with academics. It makes you fail in everything. I stretch my hands. May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now by fire. I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it. You see a job, they tell you it's yours. Quarter to reception, everything changes. I don't know who belongs to that category, but in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, following online, anyone who has been a victim, of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them, help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I'm praying There are many ladies, let me tell you. Many people don't know why things don't work, especially for ladies. It's not because you are ladies, and it's not because you are bad. It's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit. A lady is not just another human being who is not a man. No, it's more than that. A lady is the chiefest point of entrance, even among men. That's why she has a womb. The only lady, a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit. It's not just a human being. Keep your hands lifted. That's why demons look for them. That's why spirits look for them. That's why altars speak against them. It may not be caused by you, but I'm praying for you. Keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is happening. Lord Jesus, I'm praying now. That any one of our sisters here, whose family and destiny is under siege I'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny in the name that is above all names I decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause lungs around your body, those lungs, those barrenness, I cut it by the God of heaven. I cut it by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. I'm seeing 11 ladies. The Lord is opening my eyes. Listen now. I'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers. And this is a very serious demonic case. And the Lord wants to set them free now. You will not know it. It's not something you know. One of you used to see it. Physically, you see rings on your hands. In the name of Jesus. 11 people. Ladies especially. I'm praying now. Some are inside. Some are outside. Doesn't matter where you are. 
the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. Lord, I pray whoever came into this meeting, whether online or offline, and belongs to that category, in the name of Jesus, as I'm praying now, I command, I'm praying now, the fire will fall on certain people. Eleven in all I see. Lord, let it be right now. I, I break that marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. My God, my God, my God, my God. I break that spiritual marriage. Satos Pesekedela. Bratos Susi Pariatash. There's one of them you should have married. But this is what stops everybody that comes around you. I command it broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus. Whether inside or outside. You are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know, but we are rounding up. Please, just, just be patient with me. I'm hearing in my spirit, Yoruba people. Yoruba people, there is... There is something, a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now. In the name of Jesus, let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance. I command it now, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus, no escape, no escape for any power of darkness. Every mark of disfavor that is on anyone's life here. You watch what happens to your life from this meeting. Anyone carrying any mark of disfavor where men should bless you something about you becomes an irritation i command that mark to be erased from your life now ah, i command that mark to be erased from your life now i command that mark to be erased from your life now I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now.